who in some cases confuse it with Islam because sick males are required to wear turbans and beards. Singh co-authored a 2012 op-ed in the New York Times accusing the federal government of failing to accurately measure the extent of anti-sick violence. I'm Ed Donahue. A basement fire that left two young half-siblings dead on Easter morning in New York was accidentally set by the four-year-olds playing. Correspondent Julie Walker has more. It started late Saturday night in a house in Far Rockaway. Four-year-olds Jelani and Aini Tinglin were staying with family members. FGNY spokesman Khalid Baylor. The cause of the fire is being deemed accidental due to a child involved with fire play. Within minutes of police and firefighters arriving, the children were carried outside and rescue workers tried to resuscitate them as neighbors watched. The twin sister of one of the children survived the fire, along with other family members at home at the time. Julie Walker, New York. A government-funded study finds that biofuels that are made from corn are worse than gasoline for global warming in the short term. Correspondent Carlotta Bradley explains. The research challenges the Obama administration's conclusions that biofuels are a much cleaner oil alternative and will help fight climate change. While biofuels are better in the long run, the study says they won't meet a standard set in a 2007 energy law to qualify as renewable fuel. The study concludes biofuels made with corn residue release 7 percent more greenhouse gases in the early years compared with conventional gasoline. The biofuels industry and the Obama administration says the study is flawed. The research is in the journal Nature Climate Change. Carlotta Bradley, Washington. Kraft is recalling 96,000 pounds of a summertime treat. Oscar Meyer Wieners at Donahue tells us why. The Agriculture Department says products labeled Oscar Meyer Classic Wieners might actually be Oscar Meyer Classic Cheese Dogs. The problem was spotted by a consumer who called Kraft. The cheese dogs are made with milk, a known allergen. But because of the mix-up, there's no way to know about it on the label. The USDA says there have been no received reports of any adverse reactions to the cheese dogs. I'm Ed Donahue. Reuben Hurricane Carter, the boxer whose wrongful murder conviction became an international symbol of racial injustice, is dead at the age of 76. Correspondent Martin DeCaro has his story. Hurricane Carter spent 19 years locked up for three murders at a New Jersey tavern in 1966 and was freed in 1985. His ordeal and the alleged racial motivations behind it were publicized in Bob Dylan's 1975 song Hurricane and a 1999 film. Lesra Martin was Carter's attorney and once had this to say about the difficult case. If I knew, for instance, as much as I know now about the law, I wouldn't have embarked on it at all. A longtime friend and caregiver says Carter died in his sleep in Toronto after a battle with prostate cancer. I'm Martin DeCaro. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Rick Young. This is the Onion Week in Review. Gushing women voters announced Monday that they just can't help but feel an uncontrollable attraction to the sexist Republican Party. Saying they should know better but just can't resist the GOP's reckless neglect of women's health issues, smitten females across the country are reportedly driven wild by the GOP's blatant chauvinism. I can't say no to bold, misogynistic politicians who think their authority extends to my uterus. Whenever you vote for a Republican, you feel like you're doing something a little bit naughty. Top officials within the U.S. military acknowledged Wednesday that they were desperate to be given just one solid war they could really knock out of the park. Citing the recent string of messy, ambiguous military engagements in the Middle East, members of the Pentagon brass called for a conflict against a sovereign nation with a standing army and a clear-cut bad guy who employs conventional tactics and weaponry. No roadside bombs, no plainclothes militants siding out among innocent civilians. Just a fair fight where two sides shoot at each other and someone wins. We're, we're absolutely great at that. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into another week of fun here. You can take control of the airwaves at 855-450-FREE. That's 
four five zero three seven three three. And with you tonight, it's Ian here, Allie, and Mark. And of course, you can join us via Skype. Our Skype username is LRN dot FM. Feel free to reach out and connect with us in that way if you prefer. But you will have to send a contact request if you're going to do it on Skype. We'll approve the contact request and you'll be good to go from that point forward. Yesterday, of course, was four twenty. Uh, celebrations of that particular date happened around the globe, and I'm sure more so than ever before in Washington and Colorado, where, of course, as you probably know, back in 2012, voters voted on uh, petition measures to legalize the plant, legalize cannabis. Uh, it went into, effect, uh, went into effect in Colorado earlier this year. I'm not sure as to what the status is in Washington. I believe it is in effect and has been for a little bit. Uh, but it's been uh, an interesting journey, and of course, if you want to report from your 420 uh, or you know what your experience was on 420, I can tell you a little bit about mine. And then coming up, do you remember it? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, and then coming up, Allie, you've got a story for us about a restaurant in Seattle advertising some 420 specials. That's right. In a bit of a controversial manner. But I went to uh, I went to Concord yesterday here in New Hampshire. There were probably I would say some said 60, I would say 75 people, but that range sounds about right. Uh, about 75 people that were attending the 420 at 420 on 420, as and we call it. That's an annual event. Was it more than were there last year? Um, you know what? I didn't make the one last year. I heard that last year wasn't particularly large because uh, Rich Paul was in jail that's at right. the time. And Rich is kind of the one of the main spearheads behind putting this event together on a yearly basis. It was definitely not the biggest of years. Uh, it had had bigger years previously. But again, in this year's case, it happened to fall on Easter Sunday, which may very well have contributed to you know a lower turnout than, than prior years. See, I would think that, well, no, I guess it's already on, it was on a Sunday, so more, more people have the day off. Which is not always think, the case on a, April 20th. But a lot of times, you know, people are going to go to their family's house or, you know, go out somewhere, <clears throat> church, etc. on a Sunday. So I, I felt like it was a fairly decent turnout for it, considering it was Easter Sunday. Uh, photos were taken. Video is encoded. I have yet to upload it. So stay tuned to freekeen.com. I'll put the, the video clip up of what I shot while I was there. And uh, I didn't get video of this, but I did get still photos. Maybe I'll share one on our Facebook page here in a little bit. But State Representative Mike Sylvia, who's actually called into the show a few times, he's one of the Liberty uh, Liberty reps, had pledged that if enough people, to his determination, came out and were wearing fancy clothing, like suits, uh, then he would participate in the 420 celebration by... Uh, by smoking some cannabis with us. Yes, and I heard that Rich Paul was wearing a tuxedo. Rich was wearing a tux. I was wearing uh, my suit. And wow. And uh, Graham was also wearing a, a suit. So we had a number of people who were dressed uh, dressed fancy and smoking Do you remember when cannabis. you were arguing with Ian Mark about how he doesn't dress well? This is how you get him to do it. <laughs> God. Oh, good. Yep. <laughs> Just and provide the proper incentive structures. So, uh, what so is, state, I, I've seen a these state pictures. representative, this may be the first time, I believe this is the first time <laughs> this has ever happened in a public place, that a state representative had uh, had smoked some cannabis. Wow. I, you have deal. no evidence that was cannabis. I saw him smoking something in the, <laughs> the, the, the picture, but... I mean, it could just as easily be in a whole roll your own tobacco in there. It Maybe could crack. have been. And I, I certainly don't want to throw uh, Mike under the bus, but uh, he was at a cannabis celebration, and I will uh, I will say that I, I believe that it was, and I don't think that it's a problem. I asked Are him you if willing I to could testify his, that in the court of law? I, I, I asked him if I could take his picture. He was not afraid. It was not like I put that up there without uh, without him knowing. So congratulations to him. I mean, if, look, Mark, I, I understand you're trying to protect uh, Mike here. But if he wanted to protect himself, he could have just stayed home and or not partaken in the 420 celebration. I think that that's what we need more of. We need more people in positions of some level of influence to come out of the closet as cannabis users. Now, I don't know if Mike – that may have been his first time in uh, in years. I really don't know what his his usage habits are, if any. Uh, but he made that pledge, and he, and he he held to his word, which was, which was pretty great. That is great, and it's also good to see – the uh, people committing civil disobedience, which this definitely qualifies. I think last week we talked about how people misuse that term, but it's 
this is Publici- misdemeanor level civil disobedience. Right. Yeah. It's a you know it's a publicized event and it's definitely not legal to is it it's not legal to possess marijuana at least not in New, New Hampshire. Hampshire so unfortunately, it's cool to see the um, politicos. Uh, participating in civil disobedience, and then people yeah. who do civil disobedience maybe will say, "Okay, I'll make concessions. Maybe I'll run for office or something." Well, I think that uh, people who love freedom should be willing to do whatever it takes uh, to to get there. So whether that's getting getting up and testifying in, in front of some political committee or doing some level of civil disobedience, I think is all very very important. And I like that you point out the the crossover there, Allie. It was very cool. So uh, stay tuned again to freekeen dot com for video. Of that, and on my, I might share a picture or two uh, that I took from uh, from Facebook or on our Facebook, etc., Twitter, blah blah blah. So, free, uh, free talk live here. We will take your calls about anything at eight fifty five four fifty free. Now, Ali, there was apparently a controversial advertisement that was placed. Uh, was it magazine ad or a newspaper ad? It was a restaurant uh, called the Lunchbox Laboratory in Seattle. Made an ad. I'm not sure if it says where uh, where the ad was displayed, but it looks like at least online it was. Um, but the story, as you were saying before, Ian, uh, 4:20 this year. Yesterday it was on Easter, and so I didn't even realize that until the night before the event that these were two mm-hmm. events having at the same time. And so this restaurant, I guess, had a heads up and made their ads sort of cater to that. Um, you know the people that don't realize that those two holidays fell on the same day have a have a disproportionate interest in one of the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Which one was it for you, oh, Allie? Come on, Mark. <laughs> you don't know that. I go to church every week, and I'm also a liar. Eater.com says that a Seattle restaurant, Lunchbox Laboratory, which is known for their burgers, has gotten into a bit of hot water due to their recent marketing gimmick. The restaurant sent out an email advertising their Easter Sunday special with an image of Jesus smoking pot, saying. Quote, when I get back, all I want is the burger of the gods. That's what Jesus was saying. (laughs) (laughs) Easter this year happens to fall on the stoner holiday of 420. And my Northwest reports that Lunchbox Laboratory's owner, John Schmidt, admits that uh, they often push the envelope with their advertising. You know, the thing that I would find more offensive about this is um, not that uh, Jesus has cannabis because God gave us all the, you know, the animals and the plants to use. And that's what the Bible says. Mm. And Jesus turned water into wine so he could have just as easily turned some grass into grass if that's what he wanted to do. That's too bad they didn't put that part in. It's the um, it's the thing about the um, the burger of the gods. Do you understand? That offends you? Well, it doesn't offend me. I would think that it would be offensive um, because Jesus— You think that would offend people as opposed to Jesus smoking a joint? (laughs) To me— Or just to you? Well, what I'm looking at this is from the standpoint of a Christian. A Christian should say, God said you can use the plants— Jesus turned water about into wine. What an ideal Christian should. I'm just say. thinking about this from why trying to a, believe in, uh, you know, b- b- you know, looking at this as best I can from the standpoint of a Christian. But why is Burger of the Gods offensive? Because the you know the Christianity is a monotheistic religion. Uh, yes, this would be yeah. God's burger, not the burger of the gods. Oh, <laughs> you know, the, there funny. are no other gods, so the burger can't be the burger of the gods. Mm, and that Jesus would want such a burger, right? You're saying is I mean, I don't know exactly how you would phrase it. I'm. It's not my job to uh, come up with their cutting edge uh, marketing plan, but. Uh, I just think that that in and of itself I is the most brilliant. offensive part. I, I think this is absolutely brilliant marketing. And, and Mark, you used to do print advertising, so we don't know where this advertisement appeared. But it sounds like to me like this was a really smart move. Now they're getting international They said press, it came through right? email. Yep. This is an email. I mean, it's essentially print in that it's pictures and words. But um, it This is through. like their new, sign up for our newsletter and they send it to your inbox? Because I can't uh, imagine okay. that would be so controversial. Well, you know, you never know who you're going to offend. I mean, if you're just a place that serves lunch, you're going to get a lot of different <laughs> kinds of people coming in there. Day Everybody in, day likes out. lunch. Now, it's, this certainly sounds sounds like a pretty kind of cool place to eat. Yeah, right? I want to eat there. Yeah, so maybe they... <laughs> no, maybe they whoa, whoa, whoa. They serve meat. Maybe where they're Jesus not eats. concerned with marketing towards the, the wholesome family crowd if they're, you know, going towards young 20, 30-something business people. 855, 450 free. You share your thoughts. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of 
where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I am is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realist, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk-free trial. If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now. 1-800-967-9495. AF Plus is an amazing, proven breakthrough in weight loss, a once-daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing you to shed pounds in days with just one capsule a day. Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Again, we have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial. 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Free speech is protected on the internet, right? Not always. Government agencies try to limit free speech and commerce on the net. Luckily, when they do, the Institute for Justice is there to defend your First Amendment right to free speech. IJ helped set the first federal precedent for internet free speech in 1999, and ever since has worked to prevent unconstitutional roadblocks in cyberspace. Visit our website today at ij.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you like right here toll-free to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And Skype in at username lrn.fm. Free State Project is your best chance at achieving liberty in your lifetime. Where else will you find liberty-oriented state representatives who've actually already been elected to office, one of them now smoking cannabis, on the State House steps yesterday at the 420 celebration, is this happening in any other state? Not that I've ever heard of. 
We've actually got people who've won election here, likely are going to have more this year as we enter into, because in New Hampshire, it's every two years, the entire state legislature is uh, is up for, for election. Uh, uh, including the governor. Yeah. So, Everybody. So this is going to be a big deal, and hopefully cannabis will be an issue that's on the table this year in the uh, the election in a big way. And if you care about not just this issue, but freedom in general, this is the place for you. If all you care about is cannabis, then you should move to Colorado or Washington, and you can smoke all the, the pot you want. Uh, legally there. But if you care about freedom and you understand that liberty is more is beyond just a single issue and you want to see more freedom in your lifetime, the best chance for you is to get together with people who think like you do and who are willing to actually get active. That's what's happening here. That's why we're all here in New Hampshire is the Free State Projects. Go to freestateproject.org. Learn more about that there. Then go to porkfest.com, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com, porkfest.com. It is confirmed. Free Talk Live will be live from the Porcupine Freedom Festival every single night, Sunday through Saturday. We're going to be there broadcasting live. Also confirmed a number of other great LRN.FM shows. Uh, Michael Dean's going to be there for the first time ever from uh, Freedom Fiends. So those of you who have been hearing him call our show for a long time, he's going to be there. And that's his first public appearance in about ever, at least since he's <laughs> moved to Wyoming. Uh, so, I mean, he used to be in a band way back in the day, but yeah. this is, uh, he's really kind of coming out of his basement for this one. He's a prolific author too. Yeah. He's and a movie maker as well. That's he's true. the guy behind Guns and Weed, which we've been promoting for, for a long time I've here seen on it. Free Talk Live. Yeah. And it's excellent, isn't it? It is. I like it. I, it's, it's like a fun one to put on with just anyone, anyone around. But the Porcupine Parents, Freedom anyone. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> awesome. Uh, the Porcupine Freedom Festival is an event that's uh, more than just about meeting you know, radio hosts. We're just a sideshow, essentially, for for this event. There's a lot that's going to be happening. A lot of great guest speakers. A lot of DIY. This year's theme is do it yourself. I love uh, that theme. Yeah. So you're going to get to learn stuff uh, you normally do at Pork Fest, but even more. You'll you'll learn even more this year. And uh, expect about 1,500 people attending. Maybe more than that. Maybe closer to 2,000 this year. It's going to be huge. There are going to be all kinds of liberty-oriented folks, and you're going to have a good time uh, if you come up to the Porcupine Freedom Festival, June 22nd. Through the 29th, you can learn more at porkfest.com. Tickets are available for 60 bucks for the entire week. Now, that doesn't include lodging. you got to figure out, you know, do you want to camp? Do you want to bring an RV in? Do you want to stay at a hotel nearby? Uh, so there are options for you. Porkfest.com, June 22nd through the 29th. We will be there broadcasting live. I'm excited. And this, this is, what, two months now? We're two months away from this. Yeah, it's getting close. So uh, start planning your trip tonight it's the best week of the year i'm so excited p-o-r-c-f-e-s-t dot com so ali you were sharing with us a story out of seattle where kind of this i guess i'm just going to guess this hip young-ish sounding burger uh, joint burger place uh, or lunch joint has uh, put out advertisements joint with a joint in them and uh (laughs) and jesus smoking on the joint while eating a burger. Right, and he's wanting to get this burger after he's, you know, he's been dead for a few days. So I imagine the, the hunger would be pretty significant be when you come back f- from the dead. Leave uh, the jokes to the professionals, man. Well, the joke was in the ad, and it was a very good ad, but that was essentially the joke that the, that they were making. Apparently a lot of I'm people I'm not sure that's been... the joke, just the Jesus. That was the joke. <laughs> 420. The he does say, ad. he says... It was a quote box bubble. I mean, he says, when I get back, all I want is the burger of the gods. That means when he gets back from the dead, because this right. was an Easter Sunday thing. Obvious joke, and it was very, very good. Uh, but people are upset. Where's this, uh, by the way, coming from? The, uh, story? the, the story is from eater.com, but it's okay. all over the news. It'd be better if it was an ad for Haas and Pfeffer. What's so, that? Yeah, what is that? Really? It's a, it's a rabbit dish. Oh, okay. Hmm. Doesn't sound eat, like you can eat, get that at the, a burger joint. No, but it would be it would be even better yes, if I it was awesome. Hoss, I've never been offered rabbit before. That sounds kind of gross. Um, Cairo tastes like great, chicken. It's a great meat. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. It's it's okay. So does it taste like chicken? Um, I don't know. I, oh, okay. I I've only had it in stews, and it didn't taste like chicken. No, mm. it doesn't taste like chicken. It hmm. tastes more like I don't know, maybe lamb. Um, the so rabbits grow fast they breed prolifically and you can sort of e- easily harvest the meat they're a great um you know way to, for families especially in third world countries and stuff to have meat but even here if you want 
to grow your own meat, I recommend rabbits. Now, I do pigs at my place, but I've got a little more room than most folks. But rabbits don't crow at 530 in the frickin' morning and wake mm. up your neighbors, um, you know, or anything like that. Anybody can do them just about anywhere. So um, I, I'm all for rabbits. But then you have to kill cute little bunnies. Jim, you know, you everything know, you eat has been killed. As a side <laughs> note about cute little bunnies, I of all the animals that have been associated with you know the devil and being evil like snakes and what are some other ones people think crows goats mm. goats. goats i guess i've never i guess i haven't yeah. heard that one but yep. i'm surprised that like Spiders. you've seen the white rabbits with red eyes does that look like the most evil thing you've ever seen to me yeah i mean we're conditioned pretty on that one. so get the white Sinister. rabbits with red eyes you won't have any problem yeah with killing and then them. you can kill okay. them and feel like a hero um but i wanted to <laughs> <laughs> hear hear you can feel like jesus Fighting the battle between yeah. hell and There's heaven. There's a poor, lonely <laughs> albino listening to this show Aww. who feels uh, alienated by what you've just said. Do albino people have red eyes? Um, they, there's pigment issues. I'm sure some of them do. Okay. Hmm. Well, I'm uh-huh. sorry. You're not the devil. But Cairo Radio's Dory Monson has a problem with this ad um, by the restaurant with the Jesus smoking a joint. Um, on his radio show, he says that he defends the right to send out this ad um, and... But as a solution, he says, as a customer, my free speech exercise is I would choose not to go and patronize your place anymore because of that. And while I think it's, um, I probably, I guess I consider it silly to just not go to a place because of something like this. It's obviously playful and not really meaning to make any kind of serious commentary on religion or Christianity. I I think it's kind of beautiful that people can feel like they're really sticking it to um, people who they disagree with by just saying, I'm just not going to do business with them, that that's enough for people that they don't have to feel like they have to get the FCC or some kind of like um, thought police involved. Yeah. Who would get involved in something like that? I mean, there's not really any sort of regulatory agency for newspaper or email advertisements. So really, yeah, this, I mean, the only thing they ever really could do uh, would is be boycott. to boycott them, which, of course, as we've seen a lot of cases, boycotts backfire. Uh, boycotts can turn into boycotts, as they're called, which is sort of the the opposite reaction. You know, for every uh, action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Like and with Chick Fil A, when they had what was it that their CEO spoke? Some at, sort of anti-gay statement by yeah, Chick Fil A. Yeah, he made some kind of statement, well, and so people were going to Chick Fil A and kissing someone of the same sex. Well, I, but there were people that were boycotting Chick Fil A, and they were also people that were boycotting, boycotting by them. lining up, making huge. And I think lines. that's what this place is wanting to do is, is it's tr- wanting to sort of be selective about its customer base in a way, right? Uh, by yeah. you know, hey, look, we can exclude some people and I think include it's others. It's the best publicity they've probably ever gotten for their advertising. More coming up. You take control here on Free Talk Live. My name is Jessica Armand. I'm an activist, a GCN listener, and mother of three. Our drinking water and food are filled with fluoride and other contaminants that harm our teeth and gums. To protect my family, I created My Magic Mud, an all-natural teeth whitening and strengthening remedy. My Magic Mud is a soft powder that polishes your teeth, reduces sensitivity, and removes harmful toxins from deep inside your mouth. You deserve a bright, healthy smile. Visit MyMagicMud.com and get yours today. That's MyMagicMud.com. The next 30 seconds could save your life or that of someone you love. The Peacekeeper Mini by Tiger Light is the latest in high-tech self-defense. Combining the number one rated Tiger Light with the amazing new Bluetooth GPS crowd alert technology, there is nothing like it. Endorsed by top police, military, and self-defense experts. Pre-order now at one-third the retail price at Indiegogo.com. Search Peacekeeper Mini. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. 
the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc, and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you'd like. Just dial in toll-free. It doesn't have to be about 420. That's where we started the show out tonight. Uh, You can take control here. And you can also join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. So hook up with us that way, as we're going to do here in just a moment. want to tell you about ProXPN, though. First, it's a global virtual private network. And they encrypt your online data. So hence the word private uh, what you're doing right now, if you don't have ProXPN, is likely not private in any way, shape, or form. If you're entering websites into your browser and putting search terms in to, say, Google, then your uh, Internet service provider might just be logging that information. They probably are logging it for, in some cases, up to five years. So you can stop that from happening right now by going to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Uh, you don't need a credit card or anything like that. You can just get started for free and test out their service. Now, when you do the test account, uh, there's limited bandwidth. So if you want to unlock the true power of ProXPN, then you want to go with their premium account where you get unlimited bandwidth. You can do private torrents. You can select your server around the world to which you want to connect. And uh, there's so much more. You can also get around regionally blocked websites with ProXPN. Or like the uh, like you're in China, for instance, you've got a laptop with you and you've got ProXPN on your laptop. You won't be blocked by any of the Chinese web blocking systems out there. So, very handy. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go get the software. It's available for Windows, Mac, iOS devices, or Android devices. Plus, Linux users, there's a little bit of a different setup for you, but you can get ProXPN as well. The code that you'll need to save 20% off the price of the premium account for the lifetime of the account is FTL20. So, Again, go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, and then use code FTL20 when you order the premium account. You can, by the way, save even more by ordering the annual plan, which breaks the price down to about 5 bucks a month uh, with the code FTL20. And if you want to save more than that, you can use Bitcoin to pay for the annual plan at ProXPN.com slash FTL, promo code FTL20. And don't forget, there is a seven-day money-back guarantee 
So you have no risk whatsoever, except the fact that you're continuing to risk your privacy every moment you're not using ProXPN. That's ProXPN.com slash FTL. Let's go to the phones here and the fun. Benjamin is on the line in California. You're on Free Talk Live, Benjamin. Uh, good evening. Uh, so I wanted to discuss uh, two, I, I, I don't know if tropes is the right word, but two common libertarian arguments I hear or, or statements that I think uh, we should, as libertarians, probably not make because they're kind of silly. Uh, the first one is that uh, it's commonly thrown around that, uh, well, America has 5% of the world's population as 25% of the uh, world's prison population. Yeah, I've heard that one. Sure. <clears throat> right? Does and that, seem disproportionate. That, it, it, and it is factually uh, true, or it's kind of true, but it's kind of not. For instance, America is number one in the number of people incarcerated per 100,000. I think we're a little over 700. Whereas compared to something like Japan, it's a little over 50 per 100,000. But uh, it omits things like North Korea. When you hear that statistic, that statistic omits things like North Korea, which doesn't report how many people uh, they cage. Right. Okay. We don't know yeah. um, how many people North Korea cages. But, uh, I mean, honestly, one could make the argument that the whole nation is in ca is caged. And you could make I, the same argument about this country. Uh, I think you could, you know... It's not a very good cage. It's a better That's cage true. in North Korea. They do have a better one in North Korea, but you can still cross the river in certain parts. Well, and, pre and we could pretend that, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. We omit it. Okay, uh, you can take the statistic and just mention, okay, but except North Korea. And it's still large and disproportionate. But that's also because but, in other countries, it's not not all other countries are Sweden or Netherlands where they, or, or Japan where it's low because – their justice system is better. There are lots of countries where I'd rather get arrested here and thrown in a cage than how they deal with punishment, which is whipping and lashing and uh, body part removal or uh, execution. Uh, the fact is a lot of other countries, they just don't want to put the resources into incarcerating people. So they have other methods by which they hmm. punish. Interesting. You know, so it, it's just, I think we should still bring up how America is number one with incarceration, but bring up the, well, 5% of the population and 25% of the prison population is a little bit disingenuous and may uh, hurt libertarian arguments long term because people might go and investigate that stuff and go, well, wait a second. Yeah, I've never, you know I mean? I've always been really skeptical of any kind of thing like that where it's just using statistics because those are always it seems like those are more often used to confuse and manipulate people into believing a certain way than they are just to represent the complete idea of a very complicated situation right like things that you're bringing up about well would you rather be incarcerated in the u.s versus you know another country where their conditions for their prisoners might be much, much worse. It's true. Statistics can always be challenged, and there's almost always some sort of countering statistic out there you know, that has uh, been a different poll asked in a different way or different information skewed in a certain manner. So I agree. I, I think that it's important to stick to principle, personally, well, which is... I kind of feel like when people hear that statistic, what they're ca comparing themselves to is western democracies or whatever term one wishes mm -hmm. to use and you can see that the united states fault lags way behind those places um they've got just as much um you know integration from uh, foreigners and things like that but somehow they managed to get by without incarcerating um you know people at at such a high rate um also ian i think that it's worth clarifying when you say that you uh, you know, that you can't leave this country. What you mean is you can't leave this country unless you get paperwork to leave. And yep. the paperwork to leave this country as a percentage of the average person's income is a small amount to pay compared probably to North Korea, where leaving is darn difficult. Sure, but you still have to ask master's permission to leave, do you not? In, in uh, yeah, I mean that's okay. that much is true, but most people don't care. It's uh, a difference in degrees. You have to ask the other, um, you know, the other people in the other nation if you can come there too. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that has been propagated by the U.S. State Department and um, and and U.S. foreign policy. 
just because they make it so that other nations, uh, um, you know, have to do that. For instance, it probably wasn't Canada that said, let's go to passports crossing the U.S.-Canadian border right after 9-11. That was the United States. And, um, you know, I mean, I get your point, but... I just don't think that people really feel it when they have to, oh, well, you know, i got to bring my passport to go across the Canadian border. Of course they don't, they don't feel really feel unfree. it. Uh, no kidding. I mean, that, that's part of what the American government has mastered is managing to enslave people without their knowing. And that's why people are so upset in a lot of cases at some of the activism that goes on here in New Hampshire because they don't like to think of jails as cages, even though that's exactly what they are. It's just another word for what a jail is. And uh, they don't like to put, you know, to hear terms like that. They don't like the idea that arrests are kidnapping. They don't like those things. You know, they call that cult speak. And I understand what they're saying. They feel like that's jargon. For me, I feel like it's more accurate of a statement of what's actually happening. So arrest is, a, uh, is essentially a word that they have p- uh, put out there to cover up what's actually really going on. Well, arrest, um, you know, in its sort of original sense, if it's applied to the right people, arrest means stop. If you arrest a heartbeat, it mm-hmm. stops. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if somebody's in the commission of violent felonies and you arrest them, that is an accurate statement for what goes on. However, yeah. what arrests have turned into are kidnappings for offenses that have no victim. And in as a lot of as, cases, yeah. Well, yeah, in most cases. Benjamin? Can I bring up a, a kind of a, a, my other thing, uh, which is kind of connected, is one of the reasons there are so many people incarcerated in America is the drug war. And a common thing that's brought up that I hear a lot in libertarian circles, and it, it brought up to challenge people, is why was there a constitutional amendment to uh, prohibit alcohol for alcohol prohibition, but there's not one for pot prohibition? We'll have you address that here in a moment. More with Benjamin calling from California on Skype. You can Skype in just like he has at username LRN.FM. So feel free to do that. We'll continue here in moments. And then speaking of Canada and the border, Mark, you've got a uh, a kind of a disturbing story about Canadian mental health information being shared. Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is, and it's at BitcoinGeneralStore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything, with free shipping. What can you find at BitcoinGeneralStore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Hey everyone, have you heard about the no-no hair removal device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host Cheryl for no-no hair removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my no-no. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No-no hair has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the no-no, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible no-no hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. Coplock.org slash pivothead. To ensure that a record of the truth of police interactions exists and is accessible, we each need to fill. That's why we're happy to announce the Accountability Through Transparency video contest, the winner of which will receive a pair of Pivothead sunglasses. For more information and to submit your video entry, go to cutblock.org slash pivothead. One, document with a camera a police employee exhibiting double standards or the standards we expect them to live up to. This can be done while on foot, during a vehicle stop, 
while submitting an open records request, etc. 2. Upload your video to your YouTube channel. 3. Fill out the form at copblock.org slash pivothead by the deadline of midnight Eastern Standard Time, May 23rd, 2014. 4. The winner chosen by contest sponsors will be notified by email and the Pivothead sunglasses will be shipped once a mailing address is received. Copblock.org slash pivothead. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want. Right here, toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's the Pro XPN toll free line and Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. In fact, that's where we're going back to here shortly is back to Skype. Uh, but before we do that, I want to let you know about our webcam. You can go watch, listen, and interact with other Free Talk Live listeners at cam.freetalklive.com. You know those other talk show hosts, they charge you to access their webcam feature? We just do it free. You just go and enjoy. Again, cam.freetalklive.com. We go back to Benjamin. He's calling from California. And Benjamin, you were just kind of getting into a point right before the break there. Can you recap briefly? Yeah, uh, a common thing I hear from libertarians when they're discussing the pitfalls of prohibition is they will often bring up, they'll say something to the effect of, and they, the United States needed uh, a constitutional amendment to have alcohol prohibition, but yeah. there isn't one for mar marijuana prohibition. And I find this very interesting. I mean, I, I think that's a legitimate complaint. So go ahead and tell me why it's not. Well, <laughs> it's a legitimate complaint. Uh, complaint in on one side, and I'll get to that in a second. But first off, they didn't need one for alcohol prohibition. They just got one because it was the easiest way to have a national law regarding the issue of um, of prohibition. Why would that be alcohol? the easiest yeah, way? It's, it's very hard to amend the Constitution. But, but when you have a large uh, gathering of people, it's the easiest way to basically force it on the states that wouldn't have wanted it. But you could uh, pass a national law like they have with marijuana. Um, you, uh, passing a law is a lot easier than passing an amendment. But you would have had more people. Uh, it would have been harder to enforce. You would have had more pushback against that. Uh, mm -hmm. So they didn't need it. They just got it. The good, what I would say, a good argument to make is if alcohol prohibition, if the, obviously alcohol was so bad they got a constitutional amendment to, against it. If marijuana was so bad, why couldn't the same be done? If it's so awful, it's a schedule, what, one or A or whatever that is. If schedule it's one, such yeah. a yeah, schedule one, if it's such a horrible and awful thing, why couldn't a constitutional amendment get passed to prohibit that, to have prohibition against that? I, you know what? I, I just wonder if, if they say to themselves, well, because we don't need it. Um, is, this is, I don't know. Benjamin, you have not uh, presented any evidence that is that says that um, alcohol prohibition was um, an, an amendment because it, because that, uh, you know, was expedient for them. You've only just said it. So um, I'm, at this point, I'm left in the realm of skepticism. <clears throat> but what makes you think they need it? Well, the government does all sorts of things they don't need to do. 
Well, um, okay, so there's this uh, there's this uh, meme, there's this idea that um, somehow the government was smaller um, and followed the Constitution more in, say, the 1910s than it did than it does today. Um, I don't know. Um, you got me. Well, all I know is that as soon as the Constitution was passed, the men who signed it started breaking it. So it might be getting more. But we're speaking to people. Now. We're speaking to people who already believe in the Constitution. I mean, we're on. There's tens of thousands of people listening to you right now. The vast majority of them believe that the Constitution has some kind of, uh, you know, gravity, some kind of importance in our lives, even though it's just a piece of hemp paper that a long dead, um, you know, would be aristocrat signed. I have to say that the the whole point about, uh, well, you know, they used an amendment previously. Why didn't they do it on the drug issue or on the marijuana thing? It's kind of a weak point anyway. Doesn't I would, sway, does it make me think, huh, right. you got something there. Yeah, I guess I, I'll start to support marijuana decriminalization. Right, that's more of like in the things that make you go, hmm, category than anything else. It's not a real solid argument against prohibition. There's plenty of arguments against prohibition that you can argue from a moral perspective and that you can argue from a statistics perspective. Uh, there's a lot of different ground that you can cover with the with what happens when you prohibit something. What are the effects of that? What are the the consequences of prohibition? How does that display in our streets and in the safety of our lives and uh, the lives of our family? There's no shortage of evidence that we can point to 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 simply I, I sort of just... openly speculate is not really persuasive right. to me. For me, yeah. the best arguments are ones that strike the root or that sort of make you think about things. Like you know, you might be against. The idea of um, decriminalizing marijuana, but if someone can make you think about how wrong it is to try to control what others put in their own bodies and think of things in terms of that, then all of a sudden now your mind is opened to the idea of like letting others choose how they want to live as opposed to being like, hey, pot's not that bad. It's uh, not as bad as alcohol and all these other sort of extraneous arguments people try to make so that someone could be convinced that pot should be legal only because it's not that bad. Hmm. Benjamin? No, uh, I would just like to say that I completely support the no prohibition. I don't understand why any of it's illegal. If you own you, why can't you put what you want into you? And you're saying that as somebody who is nailed to the X straight edge, from what I understand. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm a teetotaler. I <laughs> never had a drop of alcohol or a puff of marijuana. I was once prescribed some medication for back pain, but I mm. did not like the way it made me feel. Uh, now, you know, now teetotaler it, evokes uh, memories of the anti-alcohol group, but were they always uh, just, you know, were they always I, anti any kind of stat, uh, you know, kind of uh, consciousness altering, or were they only a- anti-alcohol? I, I think, I think back in the day, it was mostly focused on alcohol, uh, but they were probably against all of it, and they actually drank tea, which I don't even drink tea. Because doesn't that have uh, caffeine? caffeine in it, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not because I have. I've drink soda pop that has caffeine in it. I'm not like against that. Uh-huh. And I eat chocolate. You hypocrite. In it. I, uh, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm Cigarettes and whiskey just, and wild, wild women. I, I just, I just like being able. I just like pointing that out only because I don't have a leg in the fight. That no, is, I think I'm it's not, great. I think people I'm who not, are coming from that perspective, and it was sort of rings uh, similar to what Andrew Carroll did here in Keene, New Hampshire several years ago when he appeared in public with a, a bud of marijuana in his hand had announced in advance he was going to do that and at the same time sort of put out with his press release that he is not a cannabis user uh, or at least he wasn't at that time uh, a cannabis user and that he was just doing this to make the point that this should be legal even though he's not using it he sees all the benefits to ending prohibition so i think that somebody like you benjamin taking that issue on makes it even more it makes you even more unassailable cuz nobody can accuse you of being uh you know a doper or something like that just yo oh, you just want to get high well no no i i don't i've never gotten high is you know what you can say and i'm not interested in getting high 
and yet I want to see prohibition ended. I think that's very powerful. Well, I kind yeah, of think that prohibition harms me. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, I kind of think that the most um, what what I'm hearing stories about um, here is 420. You know, Colorado and Washington are finding um, drug tourism as a big deal here um, on yeah, 420. Big money. People are going for long weekends to you know Get do high. marijuana you know tours of different places in Denver and stuff. Yeah, that's great news. And uh, what I think people tend to be more motivated by is the money. Mm -hmm. I'm sad to say, I think people are like, oh yeah, if we legalize marijuana, we'll get a whole bunch more tax revenue that I don't have to pay. And that's what bothers me the most about it. Now, I would say that if um, if marijuana is legalized, then likely you can grow this thing that they call weed for a reason, because it grows like a weed, um, in your backyard and not have any real problems over it. I mean, the very best stuff is still going to be available at these uh, at marijuana shops and that kind of thing. But you can grow pretty good mids um, on your own. Benjamin, anything else you want to share tonight? Nope, that's it. Thanks Thank for the call, sir. I appreciate hearing from you. By the way, Benjamin's the guy who's been editing up the Free Talk Live Weekly Digest audios. I think one was just posted today, as a matter of fact, to our SoundCloud Is this a conflict of interest? And to I mean, the podcast. Is, is this going to now show up on the Digest? As Benjamin thinks that, oh, my call is very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He's not qualified to say whether his call is interesting or not. I think he's fully qualified. He's the, man. A, um, he's the only party. one to do it. He's the man putting to Yeah, he's the only guy. I mean, we've had, we've had a lot of people over the years say, hey, it'd be great if you guys had a highlight reel. And, uh, and it and would. I, of course, I've would always say, thought that. Yeah, and of course I would say in response to that, I agree, you should do that. And of course, you know, who wants to do that? There's a lot of work involved, and you probably can't make that much money off of it. I don't know what... What you're really saying to us is, hey, you guys that work from the time you get up to the time you go to sleep... Here's something else a, you can with do. With a little bit of... I want you to reallocate with a little bit of, you know, your time, whenever, you know, interspersed in here. Yeah. Well, I want you to reallocate your time from the things you are doing to the things that I want you to do. Um, you know, thanks, sir, but we've got plenty. <laughs> so anyway, if your time's limited, you don't have time to listen to 14 hours of Free Talk Live via podcast every week, you can listen to... To the Free Talk Live Weekly Digest that Benjamin's been putting together. You get it if you're a subscriber to our podcast, or you can just go and uh, look over on the left-hand side of freetalklive.com. You'll find a Weekly Digest option there. That's a podcast that's only got the Weekly Digest in it. That's so awesome. Different ways for you to, to uh, chomp down on that audio. Hour number two is coming up. This is Free Talk Live. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, April 21st, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.34 per ounce. Gold is worth $1,285 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $500. Antiwar.com reports, the Yemeni government is suggesting the past two days of bloody U.S. drone strikes are just the tip of the iceberg and part of a massive and unprecedented operation against Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. Officials said it is too early to tell how many people have been killed in the drone strikes, but locals have that number at at least 46, including civilian bystanders. Most are officially labeled suspects, though the government conceded that they don't know if any high-value targets were actually hit. They insisted one of yesterday's strikes hit a training facility, destroying it entirely. The previous report had suggested all of Saturday's strikes and many of Sunday's had actually hit cars on highways and not buildings, but there may have been some buildings hit as well. It is unclear what precipitated the latest round of attacks in Yemen, though there is some speculation that the U.S. missed a high-profile al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula meeting in Yemen earlier in the month, and this may be their attempt to make up for that. You've heard of shinybadges.com, but you need to check out the new causes tab. Every item in that section includes a donation to a worthy liberty project like the Free Ross Ulbricht Legal Defense Fund. So go to shinybadges.com, click on the new causes tab, and get yourself a quality product that not only supports the cause you believe in, but starts a conversation with your neighbors. Plus, get a free gift when you pay with Bitcoin at shinybadges.com. The Washington Post reports just hours after Ukraine's government declared an Easter truce, a gunfight erupted early Sunday, leaving three people dead at a checkpoint manned by a pro-Russian militia outside of a city in eastern Ukraine. It was the worst violence since diplomats from the United States, the European Union, Russia, and Ukraine signed an agreement last week in Geneva that sought to de-escalate tension in the region. The Russian foreign ministry quickly seized on the Easter Sunday clash as evidence that the new Ukrainian government could not keep order. The new mayor of Slovyansk begged Russian President Vladimir Putin to send peacekeepers to protect his people. Ukrainian leaders fear that Putin is looking for any excuse to take more direct action in the nation's east, where many residents speak Russian and distrust the central authorities in Kiev. The security service of Ukraine called Sunday's attacks a cynical provocation staged by pro-Russian elements. However, it was difficult to independently establish who fought against whom. The Kiev government had declared an Easter truce, which had raised hopes that both sides would refrain from violence on the holiday. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. The Associated Press reports General Mills is scrapping a controversial plan to strip consumers of their rights to sue the food company. The company had posted a notice on its website notifying visitors of a change to its legal terms. Visitors using its website or engaging with it online in a variety of other ways meant they had given up their right to sue. Instead, the new term said, people would need to have disputes resolved through informal negotiation or arbitration. The Minnesota-based company's decision was widely denounced on social media after the New York Times published a story on Wednesday bearing the headline, when liking a brand online voids the right to sue. The next day, General Mills clarified the meaning of its new terms to say they did not apply when people engaged with its brands on Facebook and Twitter. The company said, no one is precluded from suing us merely by purchasing our products at the store or liking one of our brands on Facebook. That is just a mischaracterization. Despite the clarification, the company apparently continued to feel pressure regarding its new terms and issued another statement late on Saturday saying that it had decided to return to its previous legal terms. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
Following today's press conference in which NASA announced its continuing search for a planet capable of supporting NASA, researcher Dr. Kenneth Heiser sat down with Onion reporters to detail their ongoing mission to find a NASA habitable planet. Our objective is to find a planet capable of nurturing not just life, but also a sustained interest in the exploration of the cosmos. Uh, such a planet would need to have water and proximity to light and heat, but also life forms with even the vaguest understanding of the importance of astronomical exploration. Ultimately, this would need to be a planet with organisms that have a genuine interest in expanding the limits of their knowledge. Heiser added that any planet capable of supporting NASA would need to be able to generate a steady stream of financing to meet the agency's $18 billion annual budget. The important thing is we just need to be patient. There's a limitless number of planets in the universe, and eventually we'll find one with the resources to support our work. We just have to, right? This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live launching into the second hour of the program. You can bring up anything you want here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, a drunken police officer pulls a gun on a gas station clerk. We'll let you know what happens to him or what happened to him. Also, 10 ways to lose friends and irritate people. Your calls about what's on your mind. Plus, Mark will be telling us about uh, Canada mental health information being shared with the United States government. Uh, He's got that story. We're going to the phones first, though, in this hour. Robert is in Vermont. You're on Free Talk Live. Robert, to start things out. Go ahead, sir. Hi, guys. How you doing? Welcome, sir. What's on your mind? Oh, all right. Uh, You know, this is a subject that that's been talked about a lot, you know, the legalization of marijuana. And, 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 you know, I, I guess I don't, for myself, I use it because of, I have a disease, I have neuropathy. And, you know, when I use it, it certainly helps me to get, you know, get through the day. And it's not the, the part of getting high, but it helps me to be able to, you know, to get the pain to, to where it'll where to be, where it'll be bearable to where I can at least get through the day. But, mm-hmm. You know, the one thing that has not been talked about was that, you know, I wonder how much pull that the pharmaceutical companies have in terms of being, you know, the stopping of the legalization of marijuana. Well, certainly uh, there, there's there been evidence, I think, in the past that certain pharmaceutical companies have been involved with, like, the Partnership for a Drug-Free America, uh, ironically enough. So, yeah, I, I don't think it's too speculative to say that uh, not only the pharmaceutical companies, but Anheuser-Busch and the the major alcohol manufacturers and distributors, that many of those people are against the idea of drug legalization or decriminalization because they don't want the competition. Well, I want to know, is there less beer being sold in California? Um, I mean, they've been basically had legal marijuana for the last nearly 20 years, right? Um, It's it's going going on that. I mean, I I, I just don't think that it affects sales. Is it that these companies are deciding to um, do this because they see it as competition or, I mean, the same way, like a lot of the anti-smoking ads you see are funded by tobacco companies because that's part of like a deal that they have have with the government. They have to, but it's not that kind of thing, I guess, with the pharmaceutical companies because when you say drug-free America, I mean, a lot of drugs that are being abused are pharmaceutical drugs. That's certainly true. Of course, the Partnership for a Drug-Free America isn't making advertisements warning people about the dangers of pharmaceutical drugs. And if they were, I imagine the pharmaceutical industry would pull their support uh, from that particular partnership. Robert? Yeah, well, I mean, I was just going to say that, uh, you know, uh, marijuana, as far as I'm when, when I'm learning here that it's that it's killed, you know, it cures cancer. Uh, and, I mean, it does a lot of other different things, but... The thing that I don't like about because I'm on a, a lot of different types of medication, and, you know, the medicine that's inside of a pill is very, very minute, and everything else around that medication is all filler, and it could be anything, really. Well, I know that uh, when it comes to cannabis, there certainly is the THC pill, also known as Marinol, and I've heard that the, the Marinol pill is a very, very expensive medication, like several times more expensive than, say, growing a marijuana plant or even buying cannabis on the on the black market. And some people say it's not effective at all. 
It, well, certainly yeah, not effective I, I in the way they want. Me, I, I guess I don't mean to cut you off, but I, mean, I guess for me, I, I mean, I'm real leery when it comes to a pill. I mean, if I don't have to take them, I mean, I won't. But I mean, who knows? what's been put into the, who knows what the filler is i mean i, I feel like that down. kind of that kind of concern would be i would feel that for something that i bought on the black market maybe and i don't know where it came from but i probably wouldn't worry about that so much if i got that from a cvs or something yeah they're not like i understand to put where in. robert's coming from i mean i don't like the idea of the medical establishment and the the kind of the remedies that they purport i i that those make me a little disturbed as well. Like, what are these chemicals? I, what are they doing? Sure, Compared like the, to smoke, uh, combusting plant material and inhaling it? I mean, like, I assume that the... I mean, I don't know a lot about this topic, but if I had a bad reaction to a pill, I'm assuming it's the active ingredient that I'm having the reaction to, not, oh, what is this filler? This, You know, what kind of... Where's the sugar that they use for the rest of the pill coming from? Like, Robert, thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you at 855-450-FREE. That's they're probably not going to go out of their way to poison their customers? Probably not. Uh, 855-450-3733. But a lot of people aren't disturbed about the kind of the allopathic medicine establishment and the fact that they seem to have uh, this level of preference with the federal government. Uh, For instance, you got the FDA that prohibits... They got lobbyists. The FDA prohibits the naturopaths from making uh, sort of diagnoses or saying that, oh, if you 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 eat these grapes, then that could X, Y, or Z. Like, you've got to be really careful when you get into the area of natural remedies and actually trying to communicate to people what these things might actually do. So even if you've seen evidence that suggests to you that a certain natural remedy is actually good for solving something... Advertising that's usually illegal. Yep, I think that that's that's, that's pretty cool. messed up. Uh, that you can't say you can't make certain health claims because Correct. you're going to mislead people. But I think what that does is it makes people believe that when they hear health claims that they have to be true because otherwise it's illegal. But that's obviously not the case. I mean, how many times have people been duped by infomercials telling them that? You know, something, and it sounds like health claims, but they're obviously just like working around whatever these laws are. So they can be really convincing, and people think that because of these laws that they have to be, uh, what the people are saying, the advertisers are saying, must be true. Exactly. So you're welcome to share your thoughts, experience with us here at 855 free. You know, speaking of drugs, uh, there's this disturbing story about a drunken cop. Now, alcohol, as we've pointed out, is one of the hardest Drugs known to man. This stuff's will... very mind altering. Um, you know, I mean, a relatively small dose uh, as of what's available uh, can kill you. Um, you can buy enough alcohol in one bottle that will kill you dead. Yeah, for sure. Uh, at the very least, it'll, in a lot of cases, can make you very, very sick, and in some cases, do things that you may not even remember having done. That you may, you know, you may have blacked out, and you may become a completely different person than you otherwise would normally do. So the story is from Free Thought Project, thefreethoughtproject.com, where Tucson police officer Kyle James McCartan was drunk and belligerent when he walked into a giant gas station wearing his bulletproof vest and began pointing his pistol at the clerk. You think this gas station was larger than most gas stations? It's the brand name, Mark. <laughs> Deputies were called to the giant and learned two men who appeared very intoxicated had entered the store wearing bulletproof vests. Authorities say one of the men pulled out a handgun and pointed it at the clerk twice. And there's video footage of this <laughs> happening. And the guy does appear to be wearing, he's got uh, blue jeans on, but is also wearing just a bulletproof vest. So no he's, shirt on underneath, right, he's shirtless something on top. Under, under the bulletproof vest. And he definitely pulls a gun on this clerk. The fact that McCartan was you know, drunk. The bulletproof vests are interesting, right? Like people find a bulletproof vest to be threatening. We had a, um, a a listener of Free Talk Live was stopped at one point in New Hampshire for he was driving and and I guess he had a I had a handgun in in the glove compartment I can't remember what the story was but it, the the gun wasn't secured in the way that they wanted him um, to have it secured oh yes okay. it, it wasn't in the in the glove compartment it was on his hip open carry is legal in New Hampshire but once you are in a car it is no longer considered open carry so they've got this weird stupid rule that essentially yeah. you, you can have a gun on the hip on your hip while you walk around but you can't have a gun on your hip while you are in a car um, basically to protect I would assume it's to protect officers who are pulling people over on the road 
they make a big deal about seeing your hands on the mm-hmm. steering wheel, so I can imagine that that's where that comes from. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's really kind true. of silly, though. I mean, if you're wearing a gun on your hip, you could just as easily hide. If you want to shoot an officer, this law isn't going to do anything to stop that. Right. Um, but nonetheless, um, this guy also had on a bulletproof vest, and I saw one of the comments in the article was, you know, essentially, good job, law enforcement. You stopped a man who was obviously going to go out and do something. Wearing a bulletproof vest is, to some extent, a threat. To I mean, people find it to be a threat, and I think that this is kind of very interesting. Yeah, it shouldn't be a threat. It should be uh, an indicator that that person's concerned for their safety. However, in this case, it certainly would have appeared like that. Would this would have fit that description, right? The idea that a bul- somebody wearing a bulletproof vest might be dangerous. I mean, this guy walks into a gas station wearing nothing but a bulletproof vest and a pair of jeans and uh, pulls a gun on somebody. It does yeah. beg the question, what are you preparing for? Right. 855 450 free. We'll give you the rest of the story, including what his sentence was for this act in moments. Hi, I'm Lynn, and I am totally blind. Like many who are totally blind, I have non-24, a circadian rhythm disorder that can put your sleep-wake cycle out of sync with the 24-hour day. But I found out there's a new treatment available for non-24. It's called Hetlios Tazimeltian, the first FDA-approved treatment for non-24. The most common side effects of Hetlios include headache, elevated liver enzymes, nightmares or abnormal dreams, and upper respiratory or urinary tract infection. These may occur more often in patients 65 or older. It may cause drowsiness, so limit your activity to preparing for bed. Hetlios has not been studied, and it is not recommended for youth in pregnant women, children, or people with severe liver problems. To learn more and to hear the full prescribing information, visit Hetlios.com or call 844-241-2424. That's 844-241. 2424. Hetlios is now available for non 24. Talk to your doctor today. Sponsored by Vanda Pharmaceuticals. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw of free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Studies show that more and more teenagers are leaving Facebook, but where are they going instead? Apparently, to the hottest new social media site in years, the comments section of this YouTube video of a deer running in slow motion. Already, its comments section is seeing over 30 million active users. Facebook isn't giving up so easily, incorporating images and videos of deer, elk, reindeer, and even moose into their layout. But teens say that misses the point entirely. In fact, the site's one unwritten rule, don't post anything about the video itself. Teens say that's not cool. But with more and more people swapping over to the comments section of the slow motion deer video by the day, some trend watchers warn it may begin going the way of Facebook. I was obsessed with it for a while, but now it's just boring. I'm probably going to switch over to Happy Fast Kitchen. While we don't know for sure, we believe Happy Fast Kitchen might refer to the Yelp page for a Chinese food restaurant in Cleveland, the new social media site where musician Skrillex recently dropped his latest album. This is the Onion News Network. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Stouffer's, helping bring your family together with wholesome dinner options, even on the busiest of nights. Find dinner table ideas to bring your family together at letsfixdinner.com. 
To get kids involved in dinnertime conversation, ask specific questions, not broad ones. Instead of what happened today at school, try what was the best thing that happened today. The more specific you are, the more they'll have to say. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash your family today. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. We invite you to take control of the airwaves here. The number is toll-free. It's 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. And you can Skype into the show. Skype username is lrn.fm. Don't forget to join us online at freetalklive.com. You can go to coffee.freetalklive.com and get a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. BuzzBox coffee is different than regular coffee. It's shade-grown, which means that if you have the sort of acid reflux thing that happens when you drink coffee, shade-grown coffee, that's less likely to happen. It's 100% organic. This is important. Coffee is a very absorbent product, and it's made in third world countries where, you know, you don't know what their pesticide rules are and where their, what their, um, you know, their laws are on leaded gas, that kind of thing. It's top 1% grade Arabica, which means it tastes great. But what BuzzBox does that other coffee manufacturers don't do is they have a real social concern for the people that not only produce their coffee, but for people who live in the third world, period. So when you buy your coffee through BuzzBox at coffee.freetalklive.com, you're helping Free Talk Live to fund microloans that go to change people's lives in, in third world countries. So rather than, you know, once a year feeling bad and giving a certain amount as a handout, give them a hand up every day when you have your cup of coffee and upgrade your coffee experience. Have delicious coffee. Go get a free pound. Try it out. See if you like it at coffee.freetalklive.com. You can cancel the subscription at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, so the video is pretty damning. You've got a police officer in Tucson, Kyle James McCartan. He's drunk. He comes into a giant brand gas station and pulls a gun on uh, on the clerk more than once, actually. It was all caught on two gas station surveillance cameras. The fact, according to the freethoughtproject.com, that McCartan was drunk is irrelevant in this instance. However, the fact that he assaulted a man with a firearm is not. The clerk did not know what these two drunk idiots in bulletproof vests' intentions were. What would have happened if the gun would have gone off? McCartan was subsequently fired, which, you know, that's pretty rare to get a cop fired for something. Uh, and he faced a count of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, a Class Three felony. He originally pled not guilty, as he claimed to have no memory of the incident. <laughs> That's awesome. Could you use that excuse of a police officer arrested you for public intoxication or something to that effect? Oh, yes, I don't remember that. You can use that excuse. Does it work? <laughs> oh, no. I doubt that. <laughs> not if they have video evidence. In October of last year, McCartan did change his plea to guilty. Now, on to your daily dose of above the law injustice. McCartan pled guilty to aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, a charge that carries a sentence of 2 to 21 years. Now, guess how many of those he'll be serving behind bars? Um, t- let's see, 2 to 21 years, pointed a gun at somebody. You know, pointing a gun at somebody, you you should be at least talking about 10 years. Zero. Yeah. Really? Oh, I'm not surprised. And he pled guilty? Well, yeah. I mean, he knew he was going to get no time, probably. I That's see. Probably so this is deal. part of a plea deal. Mm-hmm. Yep. So zero uh, years in jail. Now, what would have happened if you had walked up to a couple cops and pulled out a gun on them and then, uh, you know, put it away. You wouldn't have to worry about prison. (laughs) That's probably true. But if you did manage to survive the encounter without being completely perforated by bullet holes, uh, you probably would go to to, uh, prison cell for a little while. Now, what would would have happened if, okay, so it's not clear when I saw a little bit of this video that these guys were police officers. I don't know. Not clear at all. So, I mean. It's a man with a bulletproof vest. With no shirt on underneath, walking into a uh, a gas station with a gun. I what mean, if you were, he looks like a robber. What if you were to react the way you know a lot of you know a lot of store owners will tell the their employees that if they're robbed, just to comply with whatever they want because they don't want their employees getting shot. But like but here in Keene, in Keene, the Seven uh, Eleven, there was an attempted robbery, 
And the guy who works there, who I, I've seen there all the time, says, I don't take S from anyone and doesn't give him the money. That's awesome. I don't remember if he had a weapon or whatever, but, but it's he certainly refused. He's going to die. Right. It's, so <laughs> what if... Well, he lived through it, apparently. I'm glad. Oh, well, whoa, whoa, whoa. Because he lived, it's an evidence that he will continue to live. I mean, what if you treated a police officer... Like, who you can't even tell is a police officer who's acting like just some belligerent drunk with a gun. What if this uh, clerk had pulled a shotgun from beneath the counter when he right. first saw this fool pull a gun out and decided to go ahead and commence blasting him? I don't think we'd have this be having this problem. What do you mean we'd be having which problem? The, the problem about talking about these two uh, morons uh, in bulletproof vests getting away with uh, lower sentences. Right, but what would happen to the clerk, especially after they found out this guy was a cop? Sorry. I mean, the guy's not wearing any. He's shirtless except for a bulletproof vest. I'm sorry. I don't, I'm not so, going to. I am not. Well, he had a opinion. badge on his belt. Um, nope. Are not you supposed do to it. take real Are, close note of get, what everybody's wearing? Do you get in bigger trouble if you uh, did some kind of violent crime against a police officer who wasn't on duty, as opposed to uh, you know just any average civilian? I would think that that would be generally true. That you're going to find a certain preference, uh, you know, uh, professional courtesy as it goes. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about. I think that the police department would just want to sweep this one under the rug as best they could. Uh, let's see. We've got a video. We have video evidence of our officers running around, uh, you know, with brandishing their weapons with no shirts on. They are lying dead in a pool of their own blood and brains here at the uh, convenience store. All the evidence points to them being completely intoxicated. Once we get the labs back and we find out that their blood alcohol level is uh, 0.22, um, yeah, I'm thinking that we're just going to let this guy go. You're welcome to share your thoughts with us here. That's uh, that's the story for you. The guy's uh, going to be on probation not sure how long the terms of probation are in this particular case. And he was fired from his job as a police officer, which is kind of a shock that they would have done that. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's despicable that he's not getting um, any kind of sentence when everybody else would. I'm not saying that a sentence I, – I think there is a victim here. You know, anybody who had a gun pointed at them, as far as I'm concerned, is a, an injured party. But, um, you know – this wouldn't have been how it would have been for you and me. This shows mostly the double standard under which we live. Now, waving a gun around is certainly a way to lose friends and irritate people. We'll uh, give you 10 of those ways here in a little bit uh, from Yahoo Small Business. Mark, you've also got a story out of Canada. Now, we touched earlier, you touched briefly with a comment about the Canadian border, etc. Uh, and, and this is sort of border related in that Canadian government agencies apparently are sharing uh, mental health information with federal, uh, U.S. federal government agencies, yep. is that right? Well, these agencies work closely together. So Apparently so. Indeed. On, uh, this is from cbc.ca. Ontario's privacy commissioner has uh, discovered that the mental health that mental health information from some Canadians is accessible to the FBI and U.S. Customs and Border Patrol. And Kavukiakian said uh, Monday that uh, some Ontario police services routinely uploaded uh, attempted suicide calls to the Canadian Police Information Centre, that's the CPIC, to people in the know, I guess, to which U.S. Border, uh, border Guards and the FBI have access. <laughs> Kavukian uh, began investigating how U.S. law enforcement had access to such personal information after last fall's news that some Canadian travelers with a history of mental health issues had been denied entry into the oh U.S. Ellen Richardson was turned away at Toronto's Pearson Airport by U.S. Customs agents because she was hospitalized in June 2012 for clinical depression. All right, we'll come back with more here in moments. Maybe the Canadian government told them that their information was safe. Uh, I imagine they probably would have made claims like that. And what do you know? They're sharing it with other government agencies in other countries even. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. 
Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Hey guys, Mark Clare here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the Ideas of Liberty Daily. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. We talk live. That's what we're doing here. It's a radio program. You can bring up whatever you want. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Still to come, 10 ways to lose friends and irritate people. Also, uh, you can talk about 420, (laughs) this drunken cop that pulled a gun on a gas station clerk, or whatever happens to be on your mind. Plus, if we get a chance, we'll tell you about a man who's been arrested for video recording an oil refinery from a public sidewalk. Uh, But also want to tell you about Ross Ulbricht. And we've mentioned his case a number of times in the past. We've been uh, doing our best to kind of follow along with the news on the case. I don't have a news update on the case, but there has been an update posted from a family member of Ross. And this is his sister, Callie, who posted this uh, video to a YouTube channel today. This is her testimonial about her brother, Ross. Uh, You can go to freeross.org to learn more about his case. He's the man who's accused of being the operator of the Silk Road, an underground black marketplace where people can buy drugs and other interesting novelties and stuff uh, for Bitcoin online. And uh, the FBI arrested him. They put him in a prison cell. He's awaiting trial as we speak. 
And this is going to be a big moment. I mean, this trial, he's either uh, the man who is behind the Silk Road or he wasn't the man behind the Silk Road. Either way, I think he deserves the support of liberty-minded people who want to see an end to the insane war on drugs. Uh, if, he wa- if he actually was behind the Silk Road, then he did an amazing job of creating a safe, safer place for the black market to operate, meaning that people would get the product that they were actually buying in a lot of, in most cases on the Silk Road, they would get a better deal and they would not face risk of being beaten and robbed in order to make that purchase or possibly be arrested. Risks were down significantly, therefore harm reduced dramatically. I mean, this guy's a hero if he really is Dread Pirate Roberts from the Silk Road. If he's not Dread Pirate Roberts, he's a man wrongfully accused, wrongfully imprisoned, and he needs to be set free for that reason. But either way, you can go and support him at freeross.org. And I just wanted to play this testimonial from his sister. It's very short. It's about a minute long. This is why she supports her brother, Ross. Again, freeross.org is the website. I'm Ross's sister, and I can tell you he has been a man of his word and honor all his life. I believe in Ross so strongly that I'm committing my full life savings to his bail. Wow. He's an Eagle Scout, and they live by the word of honor. Ross is loving, caring, and compassionate. He would never harm anyone, not even an animal, let alone another human being. Ross also loves his family very much. We are an extremely close family, and we care for one another very deeply. I have full confidence he is innocent of all the charges brought against him. I was shocked to hear the news of his arrest, but felt even more dismayed at what the media was writing about him, not even knowing him. Ross is kind, Ross is gentle, Ross is caring, and Ross is thoughtful of other people. He always wants to learn and grow and is open to hearing other people's points of view to do this. You can call on Ross to help with anything and he will be there straight away. He's one of the most loving people I know. It's almost like the articles are about another person, but sadly they're talking about my amazing brother, Ross, who we all know and love. So you can help Ross out, his family, uh, they've described themselves as not rich. He doesn't have access to any of the Bitcoins uh, anymore. The feds took them all that he had, and so they need help with funding this defense case. The attorney in this case is not going to come cheap. He's uh, Joshua Dreidel, who's represented uh, people from Guantanamo Bay. He has a, a bail set? That I mean, so it's, she said that uh, she's dedicating her whole life savings to his bail. Yeah, usually there's a bond set. Uh, it's probably set fairly high, so I don't it's know. Set quite high, I'm sure. I don't know what her life savings is. Nor do what... I. I'm just asking if he has a bail set because bails are important um, because they uh, you can't mount a particularly good at defense while in jail. Now, if you've mm-hmm. got a better attorney, you've certainly got a better chance. The more money you've got for a good attorney, the better chance you have. Uh, but it's still difficult to see the attorney and talk to them while you're in jail. Yeah, so I mean, we can look around and see if we can figure out what the bail uh, bail amount is, or if it's if it's actually even been set yet. I'm not real clear. I don't recall that particular detail. Again, if you want to comment, you're welcome to join us here. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. I imagine if he does have bail, it's probably you know half a billion dollars or something Just like that. They want to make it look like this guy's a serious criminal. That's why. That's why they uh, they essentially libeled him with the ac- accusations that he was involved in murder for hire plots when ultimately they never indicted him on those charges. Right, and so he. I mean, if he is in fact involved in murder for hire, I as a uh, U.S. citizen have not been served very well by the Federal Bureau of Investigations if what they're doing is is they're, uh, you know, going after murderers with drug dealing charges. Right. And I feel like a chump for having bought into that story so Mm. much or I I, on some level I believed that this must be the case. And, you know, a lot of people I talked to who would otherwise be supportive of him, um, you know, I heard lots of people saying, like, well, I don't support this part of it. It was successful. We're all, we're all assuming that it was true, and it yep. made us a little bit apprehensive about supporting him. But what are we supposed to do? Like, just deny, the, say, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. There's no way this guy would do that. Because we, we don't know him. Right. And after all, uh, the Dread Pirate Roberts did say, uh, good night, Wesley, and most likely I'll kill you in the morning. But it is the government saying it. So I don't know why, like, I guess it's not very convincing if someone wants to say, oh, you shouldn't trust this guy because the the state has released this information about him, and you just say, well, I don't believe anything the government says. Well, at some point, you have a very difficult time 
accepting a news story at face value, but then not accepting anything the federal government says at its face value. Right. I mean, a good liar says the truth most of the time um, and then just lies a few times. So you look crazy if you say everything the federal government, any government agency, any government agency anywhere says is a lie as far as I'm concerned until proved, proven otherwise. According to freeross.org, uh, his bail was denied. So he does not have bail. This video was made, uh, it, it was made actually a couple months ago. Okay. The video from his sister. So that may have been actually prior to the bail being denied from what I understand of the timeline. But I actually just saw this video for the first time today. Uh, yeah. It, 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 uh, you know, you confronted this video today, and I think that makes it as fresh and new. Most people here haven't had it, just because it's not a particularly new video. In theory, he could get bail later. I mean, his his attorney could put in a motion to set bail at this point. You know, maybe the bail was initially denied because the judge had been given this well, prob- you know probable cause here. They're not they going to let him bring- get out because then he can have access to his bitcoins. And if he can have access to his no, bitcoins, they've confiscated his bitcoins unless he's got a hidden cache of them, which I he may, which he may have. Would hope so. I would hope he does. Yeah. Well, anyway, we'll keep you informed, and you can go to freeross.org to support Ross. Uh, his family could use your help, and he sure could as well, as he awaits trial in a prison cell for not harming anyone. No allegations of uh, him actually having a victim in his acts. Ramon is in Miami. You're on Free Talk Live. Ramon. What's going on, guys? Hey. Long time no speak. Welcome, Ramon. Go ahead with your thoughts tonight. I was actually up in um, Jersey yesterday. I'm on my way back to Miami. I'm in Virginia now. And uh, we, we actually had a 420 rally up there in um, Trenton in front of uh, Chris Chrissy's office. It was uh, hosted by New Jersey Weed, man. A lot of other people came out, man. It was amazing. Nice. Yeah, yeah I Weed just Man's wanted a cool to let guy. you guys know. Yeah, we know. Yeah, yeah man. We know NJ oh, Weed Man sorry, because he, um, he won his trial using jury nullification, right? He called it the... NJ Weedman defense. That's right. <laughs> yeah, they've been screwing him in a lot of yeah. different ways, though. He's uh, he's he's been more than he's been more uh, two more than one trial uh, in All his right. time. That's that much is for sure. So, Ramon, what uh, what did you want to share with us about that? It was awesome, man. I actually uh, stayed up to about four in the morning in the hotel room with him and uh, Michaela Marley, Bob Marley's daughter, and uh, Peter Tosh's son, Josh One. Man, it was a real cool experience. Man. Wow. We were just talking. Expressing, you know, express, expressing different thoughts on the world and and what we could do to help change it, man. It was a beautiful thing. Like, I just wanted everybody to know that, man. Next year, <laughs> it's going down everywhere, man. I can't wait to to, to come to the Porcupine Fest one day, man. Oh, that's it's a good plan. Go now, do you know if anything happened in Miami on four twenty? Was there any kind of rally there? I I actually don't know, man. I've been up and down like doing a lot of travel in the past few weeks. I haven't been home for like a month and a half, so I don't know. They might have. But uh, I wanted to support New Jersey Weed, man, because he's doing big things up there in Jersey, man. He, he showed me a lot of support online and kept up with me, so I wanted yeah, to Yeah, he's do doing great work. There's no doubt about it. Ramon, glad you got to have a, a good time on your 420. Sounds like, I mean, if you could be with Weed Man on 420, that's where right. you want to be. And Marley. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thanks for the call tonight. More coming up here. Uh, this is Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. 
manufacturers. If you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you got to keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Every day you make investment decisions. When you do business with and hold U.S. dollars, you make an investment in the soundness of the moral philosophy and the potential longevity of the United States hegemony. People who claim a monopoly on violence around the world. If this is the investment that you want to make, please keep listening to LRN.FM. If not, stop using their currency. Use bitcoins. Get educated. We use coins.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, you can bring up whatever you want. Just dial on in toll-free here. Still to come, 10 ways to lose friends and irritate people. Also, you can bring up whatever here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. With you in studio tonight, Ian here. Allie. And Mark. Allie's here courtesy of ALP, which is her show that she does with uh, Ellen, who's been joining us on Friday nights. Yeah, actually. I think it's great that my uh, co-host Ellen is on Free Talk Live now. Yeah, you guys open and close out the weekday, uh, the weekdays. That's right. Great. Um, and ALP is what, for those those that don't know? ALP, obviously the show I do with Ellen um, every week, Saturday nights on LRN.FM. We do one topic per show. Last week we talked about, or this week, I never know how to refer to it. How do you refer to last Saturday? We talked about um, underwear. And when I proposed that topic to Ellen, there was a long pause because usually we do more serious topics. And, <laughs> that sounds very serious. And I explained to her that the, part of the reason I wanted to do underwear is because we talked about feminism the week before, hmm. and we got a little bit into bra burning, and I thought, man, I'd really like to go more into that. Um, and what we found is that we have a lot of things to say about underwear. So so the whole two-hour show is about underwear. The entire thing. <laughs> I think you might have caught a little bit of it, Ian. I did hear some of it, yeah. Were you entertained? Oh, of course. I mean, who doesn't want to hear two hot girls talk about underwear for well, two hours? Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, and also the time of day that you do the show, it lends itself to some, you know, more <laughs> sort of just, you know, topics like that, just fun topics. But, I mean... So many of these, you know, I'm using air quotes here, news organizations, you know, they'll ask politicians things like boxers or briefs. I mean, I don't know why. It's important. Yeah, well, I don't know if it's important, but people want to talk about underwear. So there you go. You can grab that episode over at alpshow.com. So what about, Ian, boxers or briefs? Yeah, good Commando. question. Commando. <laughs> 
Really? I what, knew, what I knew the you, answer. I just, I'm going to guess. I feel like you're more of a boxer brief guy. What is a box? Oh, you mean the combo the boxer combo brief thing? No, it's basically briefs that don't make you look like you're wearing diapers. It's so, a combo, yeah. The yeah. long briefs yeah. or whatever. Yeah, the long briefs. No, Sophistication I, of boxers, but with the comfort of brief. I wear, um, you know, Hanes and Fruit of the Loom, the sort of stretchy boxer things. Because, okay. um, you know, I just don't believe in spending money on this stuff. But I do like the colors. Um, as Like, I, I want them black or blue. Uh, I will wear boxers, but only when I'm in a hotel room Thank with God. you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which we're going to be in a hotel room together soon for the New York City Talkers uh, magazine thing that we do every year. And thanks to our Free Talk Live amplifiers, they've actually paid the money. One guy actually offered to pay the extra money to upgrade our room to a double bed instead of a king size bed because we were going to sleep together. Yeah, and I want to say thank you, Edison. <laughs> And that's coming up in June, and that's always great for us because it's our opportunity to kind of schmooze it up with the talk radio bigwigs. You know, this is where the movers and the shakers tend to go is the Talkers Magazine event. And we've actually been a part of the event for a number of years in the past. I don't think we've been invited this year to actually speak, but we're always there. We're kind of, you know, mainstay figures at this point. I don't know how many years we've been going to this thing, but it's many. it's got to be at least seven or eight at this point. And so people know who we are. It's nice. You know, people will actually come up and, and talk to us, unlike the first year we were there where we didn't know anybody. And so it's changed quite a bit over the years. And it's great that we're a part of it. And we're a part of it because of Free Talk Live amplifiers who actually pay to send us to this event. Uh, the Free Talk Live AMP program, you can go to amp.freetalklive.com and become an amplifier for five bucks a month. We're actually offering matching contributions. We've got uh, five or six generous listeners who've stepped up to match up to $950 per month. And we're not quite to that $950 mark. We're still a couple hundred, two, three hundred dollars $300 away from hitting that mark. So we've still got plenty of room to, uh, to earn more. You can send your 5 bucks a month in at amp.freetalklive.com. Use any major credit card through PayPal. Use Visa or MasterCard right on our site. And that money goes to things like sending us to talkers. Uh, this you know this is a Manhattan event. It's not cheap to get a hotel room. Although we did all right, it's like two hundred and thirty or three hundred and forty bucks or something yeah. like that. With um with with taxes, it should be about three hundred and thirty bucks. It should be. It's really <laughs> it's, it's really a thirty percent tax there. It's crazy. Pretty, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, so it's not cheap to attend this. Even though we don't have to buy airfare, we can just drive on down there. Um, but these are important events for us. We also go to one out in Los Angeles every year, and we, in addition to that, do advertising to radio people. And we're also doing Google AdWords ads right now just to advertise to regular folks who are looking for talk radio online. So if you send 5 bucks a month into the AMP program, we'll take that money and turn it into Google ads, meaning more people seeing Free Talk Live when they're searching for things like talk radio online. So if you want to help spread the ideas of freedom, please become an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. You get perks too, like access to the Amp Only call in lines, the Amp Only podcast, forum, and more. That's uh, amp.freetalklive.com. Oh yeah, and you get into the Amp Only Facebook group, which is probably the newest and most exciting thing going in the Amp program right That's now. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really bringing, because the amplifiers have had forum access for a while, but nobody really goes to the forum anymore. Uh, everybody really spends time on Facebook these days, for better or for worse. And so having a, a place for amplifiers only to go, and, and that includes former amplifiers, by the way. People who have amplified at any time are welcome in this group. If you've helped Free Talk Live, you're in the club for good, as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, so again, amp.freetalklive.com. Mark, was there more that you wanted to say about this story in, uh, out of Canada that they're sharing information? Or is that pretty much it? Like, here's a shocker, the government sharing your medical information. Well, the privacy commissioner there is, uh, is deeply concerned about the incident that uh, U.S. Border uh, Custom and Border Patrol and, um, and F the FBI has had access to Canadians' mental health. You see, he's claiming he didn't know about she, this? Um, well, yeah, she, she didn't know about it um, because this is just a bureaucracy. The For whatever reason, this information gets shared on a particular, um, you know, one of their little server things, and then that server is shared with the border um, Customs Border Patrol and FBI. And so, you know, there you go. This is Kavukian and Kavukian um, 
said she began investigating how U.S. law enforcement had access to such personal information after last fall's news that some Canadian travelers had, with mental with a history of mental health issues had been denied entry into the U.S. I wonder why that information would be important enough to de- deny someone entry. It kind of surprises well, me. Ellen Richardson had been turned away at Toronto Pearson's airport by U.S. Customs agents because she had been hospitalized in June 2012 for clinical depression. So there you go. Can't have a clinically depressed person on an airplane airplane flight. Crawling. Right. But no, it's fine if that a clinically depressed person travels from New York to Los Angeles, but it is not acceptable <laughs> for a clinically depressed person to go from Toronto right. to uh, uh, you know Houston. Well, of course, everyone who's never been uh, analyzed clinically as being depressed, but actually is depressed, they're fine getting on the uh, the airplane. But as long as right. you've got a diagnosis. Then you're a danger. Well, that's the thing is I think a lot of people are afraid to get help for mental issues because they don't want anyone to know about it. I Mm. mean, being considered crazy is a big fear for a lot of people, um, especially paranoid people. Just kidding. But they, you know, like you don't want to think about the you don't want to think have to worry about other people finding out that you got treatment for something or that you went to counseling for something and once it's in that information's in the government's hands there's no uh, guarantee that that information won't be public at some point I find this all very strange. As a person who is disallowed from traveling to the geographical designation known as Canada because of a previous conviction. From and the, 20 years ago. Twenty, Yeah, like 25. Yeah. Um, you know, I think this is all really kind of dumb. Now, I can go to, from what I can tell, any country in the world besides Canada hmm. and it doesn't seem to be a problem. It hasn't been a problem in the Bermuda, um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Belize, uh, Greece, uh, Italy, uh, UK. It doesn't seem to matter. I can go to all these places and it's fine, but Canada, no. Now, um, this this gal here, Kavokian, Anne Kavokian, uh, the privacy minister of Canada, says that she said suicide attempts should not be uploaded to the CPC, uh, the CPIC, which is this uh, this listserv thing that uh, that they um, you know the Canadian government shares with the US government unless they involved the threat of serious violence or harm or the actual use of serious violence or harm directed at other individuals they could reasonably be considered to be an international provocation of lethal response by police um, whatever that means the individual <laughs> um, involved had a history of Syrians violence or harm to others the suicide attempt occurred while an individual was in police custody so if you tried to hang yourself in a uh, you know prison cell or some cop said you did because mm-hmm. I don't know maybe you were drying your shirts um, in the vent um, or something at in your jail cell and they said you could use that to hang yourself I mean I had a, a, a CO sergeant threaten to charge me with attempted escape because I had taken a sheet and tied it around myself as a toga. Um, you know, <laughs> this is the kind of you know nonsense that goes on in these you guys places. Had a toga party in we had a prison? toga party. Party, yep. I don't know if I well, want to know what, what else went on. What he wasn't able to ascertain was that I was uh, drunk on homemade wine. Yeah, that was going to be one of my <laughs> <Wow>. questions. <laughs> so. You know. What, from the grapes from the cafeteria? Mm, potato skins, right? Is it pota- you, potatoes? Uh, well, you, fruit juice. We bought, um, we bought fruit juice and added yeast and to fermented it. Fermented it. Wow, when life gives you fruit juice. We'll be back wine. here in hour number three. <laughs> you can take wine. control of the airwaves. Ten ways to lose friends and irritate people coming up. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Lumber Liquidator's once-a-year hardwood flooring clearance sale is going on now. This is the biggest flooring event of the year with five days of historic hardwood flooring deals like top-quality clearance flooring for just 19 cents a square foot, gorgeous Aberdeen birch engineered hardwood, and even horizontal natural bamboo for just $1.49. Plus, more deals at your local store. So go to LumberLiquidators.com right now and find the store nearest you. But hurry, their famous April sale ends Monday the 28th. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? 
At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, April 21st, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,286. Silver opened at $19.40, and Bitcoin is trading at $499. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Bitmain Technology, creators of the Antminer S1 180 Giga Hash Bitcoin Miner. No pre order, ships on time, and sometimes it's early. Buy yours today at bitmaintech.com. Support also comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Online at affordablesound.com or call them 512-459-5253. And support comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovations. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM, June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. In the news, several so-called Al-Qaeda militants are dead following the third United States drone strike in three days in Yemen. The Guardian reports a Monday morning attack follows one on Saturday that left three civilians and 10 suspected militants dead and another drone strike Sunday that killed around 30. It's unclear how many militants died in the latest attack. The Texas-based EquiSearch is battling the Federal Aviation Administration over efforts to use unmanned drones to search for missing persons around the country. In 2011, Congress gave the FAA until September 2015 to develop rules for commercial use of unmanned aircraft. In February, the FAA notified Texas EquiSearch that they must immediately stop using drones. EquiSearch founder Tim Miller says they are not using drones for commercial purposes and should not be restricted. On Friday, the Obama administration announced another delay in the final decision on the northern leg of the Keystone XL pipeline. The State Department said it was giving government agencies more time to study the effects of the pipeline. Critics speculate that the Obama administration wants to avoid making a controversial decision before the midterm Senate elections in the fall. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Dorothy Erminger at Capstar Lending. Dorothy can walk you through the ins and outs of buying a home. Give her a call, 512-343-6494, or apply online at calldorothy.com, NMLS 216-624. Support also comes from My Magic Mud, all-natural teeth whitener. Go to mymagicmud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's mymagicmud.com. And support comes from Brave New Books, online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, April 21st, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Members of the United States Special Forces have been committing suicide at record levels for the last two years. That word came from Admiral William McRaven, the head of the U.S. Special Operations Command. AFP reports his admission came during an intelligence conference in Florida. Since the start of the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, the Guardian reports that military suicides have increased across the board and, by 2012, outpaced combat deaths. Corn-based biofuels are bad for the environment, worse than gasoline in the short term. That finding is revealed in a new study paid for by the federal government and released Sunday. The outcome of the study challenges the Obama administration's belief that corn-based biofuels are a cleaner alternative to oil. The truth, as delivered by the study, is that biofuels made with corn residue release 7% more greenhouse gases in the early years as compared with conventional gasoline. A small study has reported a reduction of symptoms of 
post-traumatic stress disorder in women after taking yoga classes. The National Center for PTSD at the VA Boston Healthcare System studied 26 women with PTSD, 14 of whom participated in weekly yoga sessions for 12 weeks. The center found that both the women who took yoga and those who did not had a decline in symptoms. The yoga group did well. In fact, they improved in their PTSD symptoms, and the control group actually did well, which was not expected. That word from Karen Mitchell, the lead author of the study. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Mass Appeal Printing, your source for anything printed since 1972. Now accepting Bitcoin online at MassAppealInc.com. And support comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, April 21st, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. After excitedly posting an image of a Lamborghini Rebenton to his Facebook account earlier this afternoon, 38-year-old little boy Nick Weber talked to Onion reporters about his passion for fast cars. When I saw that car, I was like, whoa, it was so cool. I had to show it to all my friends. I like red cars the best, but only ones that are really, really fast. I can't wait to get one when I'm older. I'm going to get the fastest car in the whole world. <laughs> The Weber also frequently posts about his other interests, which include motorcycles, fighter jets, and Marvel superhero Iron Man. The nearly 40-year-old small child confirmed that sports cars are his favorite, and the picture of the bright yellow Lamborghini has already garnered 15 likes and 9 comments from other enthused middle-aged children who are friends with Weber on the social networking site. My best friend Bradley, he sent me a picture of a blue convertible that's so awesome, it has these big wheels and even has a racing stripe on it. After watching several online videos of fast cars and eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch, the homeowning little tyke went to his room to take a nap. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited to bring up whatever you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And with you tonight, Ian here. Allie. And Mark. Allie's here, courtesy of ALPshow.com. We have the 10 ways to lose friends and irritate people. This is an important list. Uh, this isn't. It's, it does seem to be an important list. I mean, certainly uh, many people have heard of the uh, the book by Dale Carnegie, uh, how to win friends and influence people. Right. These Is this a spin off of that? I would say it's definitely influenced by that. Absolutely. And I, I would recommend that anybody, um, for, first off, I would recommend that book to anybody, but there are sort of synopsi of that book on the internet, mm -hmm. and I would recommend those too. These, this is a, these are valuable things to know, and they were valuable close to 100 years ago, and they're valuable now. It's an old book, but yeah, very good information. The story is from Inc.com, Inc.com, as in Incorporated, smallbusiness.yahoo.com's Jeff Hayden writes, Want to win friends and influence people? Here are 10 things that will ensure you won't. Number one, you thoughtlessly waste other people's time. Every time you're late to an appointment or a meeting, that says that your time is more important than the others. Um, yeah, being on time for meetings is a big deal. Also, not mentioning that you've, uh, you know, you're not on on time. I would not telling the person like if you're running late to not inform them. Yeah, right. that's a bad thing. I believe that there should be a five minute grace period. I don't want to be informed that you're going to be three minutes late. Right. I tend to agree with that, and I figure that you know people's clocks and watches and things like that sometimes are set slightly differently. So you traffic, can, you know, a variety you can pull of that off. But yeah, I tend to agree. If you're going to be more than five minutes late, call. Right, and, and uh, just let the person know. you know, in this world of cell phones, it's not that big of a deal to call or There's send no a text. No reason why you couldn't. Um, you know, if you're if you're on the road, um, you know, use a heads hands free device and make a telephone call. If you are, um, you know, if you're not, maybe you're you know passenger or something like that, you can send a text. But that's the best thing to do in that circumstance. Yeah, I mean, you've got to respect other people's time. I know you're running late, but if you're running late as a lifestyle, that's a problem that you've got. And people, your your income is going to suffer because of it. That's true. I mean, I think that it definitely, when someone shows up on time for things consistently, then it's just kind of reassuring to others, like, oh, I know that they'll be there. It's just one person to not have to worry about. And you get invited to more stuff if you show up on time. If it's yeah, the kind of thing where... If you don't show up there, it 
it holds the production up. Well, even if it's not that, uh, I think I still think it's important to be punctual if you possibly can. I mean, we have regular meetings here in the Keene area that are supposed to start at uh, six o'clock, but you know, half the people don't show up until six twenty. So uh, a lot of people are not so good at showing up places on time when it's important to be punctual at a public meeting. If you, for instance, like a, our, our Bitcoin meetup. Before, well, you don't want to have to repeat the things that have been said if the presentation's going on. Well, if there's going to be a presentation for sure. But this is like a, just a social meeting in general. So, yeah, you could argue well, it's just a social meeting, so it's not that important to show up. But what about the person who's showing up for the first time? They're likely to be on time. Somebody who hears, for instance, that like, oh, the Bitcoin meetup in Keene is at 530, and then they show up and there's one person there. Uh, that's not going to be good. Well, see, that's the problem with recurring events where people constantly show up late is because when you're that person who shows up on time and you're the first person there, it's uncomfortable. So you know next time to be late. Yeah, and that's the problem is that people are uncomfortable being first. So this there's this self-perpetuating issue where people start showing up later and later. That's why parties and, tend to run way later. Like if a party starts at 7, a lot of like... It's not started I'm, until 9. I'm not really going to show up at least until after 8 because I don't want to be part of that awkward uh, early show, shower-uppers group. See, I'm going to likely show up beforehand, um, early, and then leave early because I don't really particularly want to be there when the action's really going down. Um, I'd rather, you know, I'd rather have made my appearance and say, "See ya." See well, what in, what makes me want to show up on time for for something business related is because uh, it's the same reason why I want to show up later to a party is that I want to like blend in. So if you're showing up later at a party, then everyone's already there. People don't necessarily notice you coming in. But if you're going to like a business meeting and you're late, then everyone notices you. Everyone's looking at you coming in. Yeah, that's a good point. It, it does depend on the situation. Um, and certainly if you are expected to be somewhere at a certain time, you really should be there on time. Also, they give a couple other examples here. Every time you wait until the grocery clerk finishes ringing you up to search for your debit card, says you couldn't care less if others have to wait unnecessarily. That sounds like somebody's grinding an axe there. What does that have to do with winning friends and in influencing people? You're, you're likely to have a business client behind you in you the never express know, line. Mark. You it's never quite know. possible, but I mean, small town, you may very well not a. I, I, yeah, I get it, but let's not use our list on how to win friends and influence people to grind our personal access. Now, this is a 10 ways to lose friends and irritate people. Well, you're certainly going to irritate somebody, especially the author of this article. <laughs> Every time you can take three minutes to fill your oversized water bottle while a line stacks up behind you says you're in your own little world. and your Which world line are we talking about? I'm not sure what that what he means by that. Oh, good Lord, this person is... I, I can tell you how to irritate this uh, talk show host. Write a uh, write an article about uh, all your pet peeves. Small, <laughs> irritating things, but basically no big deal? Wrong. People who don't notice the small ways they inconvenience others tend to be oblivious when they do it in a major way. How you treat people when it doesn't really matter, especially when you're a leader, says everything about you. Act like the people around you have more urgent needs than yours, and you will never go wrong, and you will definitely... Be liked. Well, I wouldn't disagree with that statement um, in and of itself, but I, you know, I mean, that's I've, why I'll get into a, a line if if I'm at the grocery store and they don't have a bagger, I'll start bagging just because I don't want to have to have that clerk have to do that extra work, especially if there are people behind me in line. So I'm more than happy to help expedite. No problem at all. Let's go continue here. Uh, number two. Oh, actually, Helen's with us in New York. Helen, listening to WNYY. Hello there. Oh, hi. Good evening. Hey. Um, I just wanted to bring a point up because there's this guy, uh, if you remember, him, Bill Clinton. Remember this guy? I yep. remember B Bubba, yes. <laughs> okay. And he seems to be going out, pressing the flesh, and doing a lot of things to promote Democrats right now and stuff. So he's still a pretty popular guy. But he was notorious during his entire presidency for being late for everything. Is really? that so? You know? Yeah. You know, another yeah. thing about him, uh, by the way, I think that I really feel like Barack Obama's campaign was pushed over the top when Bill Clinton um, spoke for him. Um, so, you know, I think that he's he's very he's still quite influential. But um, Barack yeah. Obama is on time for things, though. <laughs> well, indeed. But, you know, I, I think that uh, Bill Clinton, to some extent, has the superpower where he can sort of look people in the eye and, uh, you know, really 
get into their world. And I think that he would be more powerful if he was on time for things. But, you know, because he's able to do that, he gets away with a lot. It's kind of comforting to be around in a, in a way if someone is not always on time you know when you're around that person that always is on top of everything and it, it's a little intimidating because you feel like you always you're never going to be as with it as that person there are and those then people when you're around someone and they just seem to have a more casual attitude about things it makes you feel a little bit more comfortable yeah right i couldn't be this i couldn't be this bad <laughs> right <laughs> I, I think it's it is, it is respectful and polite to be on time. You're respecting the other person. So. Yeah, absolutely. And if you want that person to like you, uh, showing them some respect can go a long way. Helen, thanks for sharing that little uh, tidbit with us. Appreciate hearing from you tonight. 855 450 free. Number two on the list of the 10 ways to lose friends and irritate people is you ignore people outside of your level. There's Mm. an older guy at the gym that easily weighs 350 pounds and understandably struggles on the aerobic and weight equipment. Hats off. He's in there trying. Yet nobody talks to him or even seems to notice him. It's like he's invisible. Why? He doesn't fit in. We all do it. When we visit a company, when we uh, we talk to the people that we're supposed to talk to. When we attend a civic event, we talk to the people we're supposed to talk to. We breeze right by the technicians and talk to the guy who booked us to speak, even though the techs are the ones who make us look good and sound good on stage. Boy, you didn't make that mistake out in Bitcoin 2013, did you? You were you know, talking to the techs and so was really working things out. I try very hard not to be this guy. Um, you know, one thing that people are always expecting is, is that talent is going to be, you know, difficult to deal with and stuff. And I don't want to treat people this way. All right. We're going to come back with more on this one and uh, we'll get Ali's thoughts and yours as well. 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237, and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. 
Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family-owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype. You can Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. Tonight with you, Ian here. Allie. And Mark. And you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com to enjoy the site for free. So Bitcoins have been all over the news. And you're probably wondering how to go about getting some Bitcoins. Cashintocoins.com is the place to go to do that. They make it really easy for you there. Their instructions are clear. Their system is easy, safe, fast, completely legal, inexpensive. Customer service is their top priority. Um, you know, Bitcoin prices have been kind of on a little bumpy ride uh, recently. They were as low as 320. They're up to, I think, 510 or something today. Um, you know, I see 498 at this moment in time. And people have asked me, when's the next big run going to be in Bitcoins? And I've got an answer. Um, I think that's when people who have Bitcoins begin using them as a currency. Hmm. If you want Bitcoins to go up in value, you have to use the Bitcoins you have to buy things at merchants because other merchants aren't going to begin accepting them. There's not going to be the really run until people are using them. I use them. And one of the ways that I, you know, it's not that I don't want to hold Bitcoins. You can hold Bitcoins and still use them by buying Bitcoins through cashintocoins.com or whatever method you use. I, I like I would recommend that. I mean, yeah. that's, an e that's the easiest way I've ever found to do it. Right. Well, cashintocoins.com certainly makes it easy, especially if you um, orders under $40 have no fee. And they also, you know, allow you to give a certain amount of your fee to uh, charities. So it's a it's a great uh, system for getting Bitcoins, but you need to be using your Bitcoins. It's a currency, not some kind of commodity that you buy and, and hold because um, it's not going to go up in value if it's not used. If it's not used for mm. what it's used for, it doesn't have any value. Uh, commodities like gold or pork bellies or orange juice they're not of any orange juice isn't any good unless somebody drinks it pork bellies aren't any good unless somebody eats bacon and bitcoins aren't any good unless you spend your bitcoins at merchants online and in your community so uh, go and get your bitcoins from cashintocoins.com by the way big news coming from cashintocoins.com in the near future all right looking forward to bringing that to you we're talking about the 10 ways to lose friends and irritate people from inc.com and yahoo small business uh we're on way number two which is to ignore people outside your level and he gives examples of how you talk to the people you're supposed to talk to you breeze by the technicians or the guy who booked you to speak even though the techs are the ones who make us look and sound good on stage here's an easy rule of thumb nod whenever you make eye contact now a lot of guys are familiar with this but i'm wondering ali does the nod exist with women? Like it's kind of a it's always seemed like a guy thing to me where you're walking down the street as a guy and you you make eye contact with another guy and you give him that nod. Uh, Are you talking about the chin up thing? <laughs> Chin down, right? Uh, chin up or down? I don't know if it's an up or down thing. I just you know not like the a nod. single it's motion. Not. It's um, definitely a down thing with guys. I thought like you nod down. I've so, never noticed. If you I've nod never, up, that I seems a little bit up. like we know something. 
Yeah, yeah, I think that that's what it is. Um, it's a guy greeting of some sort. It's an acknowledgement. I think a nod includes more than not, the, I'm not talking about the the the, the chin bump thing. I'm talking about a, a nod's more than one um, head motion to me. Oh, really? I could be wrong. I don't, I don't know, know if what you're this right guy's... about that. But does something like that exist? I don't know how familiar you are with it, the, being that you're not a guy. Or... Not, you know, I guess between girls, I there, I don't really know anything of like that. But say there's, there's no universal like acknowledgement of aha. Not the, I've acknowledged you. I don't think so. <laughs> You're another woman. I've never nodded at another woman. I've nodded at like guys before, like for some reason because I know that's how they communicate. And I'm trying to like <laughs> communicate with them in a way they understand. But with girls, I just don't even know what to do. Honestly, hmm. I just try to. I, I don't know. I think it's more like. You would say, I'm used to saying hello to people if I want to acknowledge them. And, you know, I just try to seem approachable. But other than that, I don't really have like a go to. It seems like a nod is so simple that I wish I could just do that with everyone. Okay. I didn't think it existed. And I figured that you would know. Uh, and it sounds like such a thing does not exist. If someone is. If someone is looking at me and I and I make eye contact with them too, then I guess like a nod is an is an okay response. Saying hello is better. If a wave. I, I think saying, saying hello. I think work. speaking to the person is a better thing to do. Like oh, good morning or something like that. Uh, but there is that sort of silent nod that is uh, definitely seems to be a guy thing. Well, um, I, I, when I think about speaking to someone, I'm, I'm always thinking about people on the street, and I've found over time that. There isn't a lot of payoff to saying hi to people on the street. You know what I mean? No, but it's friendly. It, it's friendly, but there's not a lot of payoff. Um, the point I'm trying to I make think, is, is I hold think on. the payoff is long term. I think that people saying hello to each other on the street makes for a friendlier place to live. So overall. you're trying to propagate people saying hello, and I get that. But when a when when what you're doing is intending, you're sacrificing when what you're doing today sort of um, you know is it's not a sacrifice to say hello to somebody as you pass. Them. Let, could you let me make a mistake? Make a statement before you just Please. rebut it. I haven't even made the statement as to why. The fact is. When you say hello to people, you're more likely to get panhandled, and you're more likely to... Um, never happened. It's never happened? No, all the time. Not in New Hampshire, at least. All the times I've ever said hello to somebody, they've just returned the greeting. I don't think I've been hand panhandled in New Hampshire at all, um, but I certainly have been panhandled in Vermont, and I believe mm -hmm. you were there. Um, the... Uh, but and the other thing you get is just sometimes people don't say anything or you can't hear them. You don't know whether they yeah. said anything. So you have this kind of, you know, this, oh, well, I just said hello and the other person didn't thing, which is whatever. You know, get over it. It's not a very, well, get, why, why should I give it over? Well, get see, over it. Why should I say well, hello? You, then just be rude if you want. Can, I'm not being rude. I can relate to the people who get frustrated by others not saying hello or waving because it's like people act like social interaction is so taxing on them as if. You know, saying hello to them is this big inconvenience or asking them a question. Some people just act like, why are you holding me up? And I understand if you're in a, if like, you can tell when someone's in a rush. You don't, you know, hopefully you have some social graces about you to know not to um, misman, you know, make them feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. about blowing you off. You don't want that scenario. But when people just seem put off by someone doing a friendly gesture, because not responding is basically a diss. Like, as far as I'm concerned, or if I say hello to you... Or a person might not have heard. You know, yeah. they might have had a headphone it in happens. or something like That's that. happened to me before. I've said hello to someone to a and they were deaf and I thought that they were just yeah. being a jerk. I don't want to jump to a conclusion as to why a person won't return that. But certainly you could think to yourself, oh, well, that person is not having a good day today. And you just move on with yourself. John is in like Minnesota. It takes effort to not say hello. It's just like the automatic response is to be like, oh, hi. But if you specifically don't say hello, it seems Some people purposeful. Are grumpy. Yeah, they are grumpy people out there. Jerks. And that's fine. Anyway, John, you're on Free Talk Live listening to WNMT in northern Minnesota. Yeah, say you're walking down the street and you're talking to somebody on the phone and, and uh, you make eye contact with another man or woman. Uh, we used to do this in the 40s, 50s, and, the, and I still do it. And so you're walking down the street and uh, you're busy, they're busy, you make eye contact, you just bend your head down a little bit and keep a smile or whatever and keep on walking. Yeah. Because you can't stop your conversation. You Smiling can't take everything out of your hands to say hello and all that, you know, to wave at them or anything. You just nod your head. Were you talking on the cell phone in the 40s? <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, you know, I, I was going to buy one in the 60s. They, were, know, they, they, they existed in the 60s. <laughs> 
John, thanks yeah, no, for your I, call tonight, sir. Sorry, I appreciate it. Hey, hey, anyway, the, the, the phone cost more than the car did. In, I in believe it case. sure did. <laughs> Thank you, John. I appreciate hearing from you. Uh, uh, yep, more coming up here in moments. You can share your thoughts on, uh, well, what is it, acknowledging people in real life, uh, and more coming up. Free Talk Live. Do you owe the IRS money that you can't pay? Are tax liens and levies ruining your life? Are you tired of being afraid just to go to the mailbox? If this describes you, then Dan Pilla can help. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla, and I've been solving tax problems for more than 30 years. In fact, I wrote the book that made it possible to negotiate settlements with the IRS, and I've helped thousands of people do exactly that. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. New changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever before eliminate their debts once and for all. There's no need for you to suffer another day with IRS debt. Call 800-346-6829. I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. When commercials come on, don't push the button. Instead, listen. Even if you don't sell things for a living, you're still selling in the various conversations and transactions that make up your busy day. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important, especially if you're a job seeker. So take a lesson from Madison Avenue. Often the fewer words, the more effective the message. Like Jiffy Lube, where you never need an appointment or the office max ad that says you supply the ambition we supply everything else how about online ticket broker stubhub.com the way in when it's sold out or cybercupidmatch.com's seductive go ahead it's okay to look how cleverly and succinctly can you distill your message for more tips hit survivalspeech.com i'm holland cook do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control of the airwaves. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. We're talking about 10 ways to lose friends and irritate people, and we're going to continue that list here in a moment. But I'm excited to announce uh, a contest 
that's actually happening between Free Talk Live and CopBlock.org. Ooh, I love to compete. Yep, as well as uh, it's actually uh, Checkpoint USA is involved in helping us with this as well. In fact, Checkpoint USA has purchased the prizes for the contest, which are Pivot Head Sunglasses. I have to say... I'm pretty excited about getting my hands on a pair of these things. I'd seen them used in some of the the YouTube pranksters videos where they've got these sunglasses that they'll wear while they're doing a prank and uh, it takes really good, you know, HD quality video and you know, when you first look at the sunglasses, you glance at them, you can't tell they're a video device. So, this is the prize that is up for grabs for what is being called this year. And there was a there was a uh, there was a situation like this last year. It focused only on checkpoint videos. This year, the uh, the video contest is called Accountability Through Transparency. And you can go to copblock.org slash pivothead to get details on how to enter the contest. But basically, you have to document with a video camera a police employee exhibiting double standards or uh, the standards that we expect them to live up to. So somebody that's, you know, a, a police officer that's blowing it, they're not doing their job, they're screwing it up, uh, you know, get some good footage of that, and you can submit that. There's details on how to submit it. You can do it between now and toward the end of May, May 23rd, midnight on May 23rd will be the end of this contest. You've got plenty of time to get out there and get the footage and get it turned in, and we'll be judging this uh, contest. Myself, Pete Ayer, and Terry from Cop- uh, from Checkpoint USA will be the judges of the contest, and you could win a pair of Pivot Head sunglasses. So very excited about that. Uh, again, copblock.org slash Pivot Head. The contest is on for the next about a month. So get your entries in. We're going to continue with the 10 ways to lose friends and irritate people, but first, Nathan is in Texas via Skype. Hello, Nathan. Hello. Hey, you're on the air. I'm really glad you brought up this topic because I have felt uh, self-conscious in the past about giving the nod, and uh, I'm glad that it's a legitimate practice. <laughs> I'm not really sure where you learn it exactly. It wasn't like somebody uh, ever explained, you know, when you're passing by another male and you don't have time or the interest to talk to the person, <laughs> you just go ahead and give them a nod, just one nod. Uh, that's, you know, that's what it is basically. Well, but, um, you know, what, how does any social convention, um, uh, occur? It just gets used, right. I guess. You know, yes, I mean, up, you're it. moving your head up and down means yes. Moving your head side to side means no, unless it doesn't mean that in the culture that you're, you're in. I mean, yeah. so it's just a, it's a cultural phenomenon. It absolutely yeah, I definitely is. think a lot of those are kind of decentralized things. You just kind of learn spontaneously. And if you don't, someone will uh, get offended and uh, explain it to you. But that's not actually what I wanted to call about. You mentioned Talkers Magazine, right? Yes, that's right. Well, I found this interesting video on YouTube from 2007 by a certain Holland Cook. And in it, a certain Ian B. Freeman appears and talks about a wiki. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And is there a wiki? I didn't know there was a wiki. Can you? Uh, there can you... was at one time a Free Talk Live wiki, and yeah. it has since been taken offline. It was really oh, just really? a uh, a cuss fest of, uh, of of graffiti and nonsense. <laughs> um, you know, nobody had really, really any, you know interest in it. Just maintaining wasn't it. being used. I mean, it, it did for a while. Like yeah. it, it had some attention. When wikis were wikis, right. um, you know, it was People exciting. People were all over it, and there were a lot of articles there. A lot of stuff was contributed to it. But ultimately, it never really, you know, it, it petered out, out yeah. over time. It was, and, it was exciting when uh, it was exciting, and it's not and, now. And unlike a message board, when a wiki becomes disused, it just looks disused. And uh, the message board, at the very least, the older topics kind of float downwards over time. With the wiki, if, if there's a page that's just not been taken care of, it just looks bad. Uh, it, you know, we know the Free Talk Live BBS, for instance, is not near as popular as it used to be, but because it, it used does, to be more popular than Free Talk Live the dot com the page, uh, but because it does get used to a small extent, it at least has fresh topics. Those fresh topics are at the top of every message board that are in there, and so it looks still like it has some life in it. Whereas the wiki, it was definitely dead. There were maybe two or three people that would do any any level of maintaining in it. And so what we actually did was I think we zipped it up and took all the content from it and put it on a post on the Free Talk Live BBS. So if you go to the if you go to bbs.freetalklive.com and search for wiki, you may be able to actually find the thread where the zip file 
with all the old wiki stuff is available. So in theory, if somebody had really cared about the Free Talk Live wiki, and by all evidence, they didn't, uh, but if somebody really did care about the Free Talk Live wiki and wanted to, say, download that zip and launch their own version, they certainly could do so. Well, to me, a wiki, uh, I kind of think Wikipedia, I kind of think people you know, collaboratively updating information. I don't really yep. think news or discussion. So No, that's uh, exactly what a wiki is, and it wasn't being very collaborative over time. I guess you could have stuff about how to tape uh, tape the police or how to install those uh, freedom cams. Or well, there's Liberty like Wikis out there, too. How popular they are, I don't know, and whether or not we would want to duplicate an, an unpopular idea is... Uh, <laughs> we'll take another uh, unpopular idea and duplicate yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to pass on that. But uh, I hope that answers your question, Nathan. Thanks for the call tonight. 855-450-FREE. Let's continue on the 10 ways to lose friends and irritate people. Number three, uh, you ask for too much a guy you don't know asks you for a favor, a big, time-consuming favor. You politely decline. He asks again. You decline again. He then whips out the need card, but it's really important to me. You have to. I really need it. Well, maybe you do, in fact, really need it, but your friends are your pro- or excuse me, your needs are your problem. The world doesn't owe you anything. You aren't entitled to advice or mentoring or success. The only thing you're entitled to is what you earn. People tend to help people who first help themselves, and people tend to help people who first help them. And people definitely befriend people who look out for other people first because we all want more of those people in our lives. You know, this is true. I had someone message me on Facebook recently, someone who I don't really know very well, and they just came out right out of the gate saying, I need you to do me a favor. Hmm. And I wanted to write back saying, like, not that I'm under any obligation to do you a favor, but I'm curious to know what it is you're going to ask. But then I was like, no, because then it's going to make me like, I just don't know who goes out and says, I need you to do me a favor to and someone they know don't know. Person? No. And this is a tie down technique to get you to, to you know, this sort of uh, short leading question or whatever to get you to respond um, to, to pique your curiosity. Um, once you then respond, then you're that much more obligated to whatever this favor is that you probably mm. weren't going to do in the first place that was an intrusion upon your time. Um, this asking for uh, mentors. Now, having a mentor is extraordinarily valuable. Um, we're talk, taught to do this in business all the time, and I think it's great. But it, to some extent, it has to be organic. Mm -hmm. The uh, you know, just you don't just go up to somebody or send them an email or or whatever and contact them and say, "Hey, I want you to be my mentor." Um, you really sort of need to have some kind of contact before that, and it's it's not easy. It's not it's not the kind of thing that somebody. I mean, it's really it, it's it's a very touchy situation. I mean, if you're asking somebody to mentor you, you're asking for a lot of their time, their energy, their emotional attachment. And it's not just this, hey, I'll just ask 10 successful people if they'll be my mentor, and one of them is bound to say yes. Um, you know, I think, it's, I think it's a terrible way. To, it's like standing outside the grocery store and asking attractive women if they want to be your girlfriend. I've had people um, contact me who I never had heard of before and ask me questions about, say, most frequently about getting started in radio syndication and, and how to syndicate a radio show. That's an show. interview, and it's a slightly different thing. Well, it was a personal thing. They weren't personal interviewing interview. for an article or anything like well, that. I know, but, but it's, it's it, they're, they're asking you for advice on a particular topic. Well, That's right. not so mentoring. I, wouldn't, I, wasn't, I understand what you're saying. Mentoring is like this thing that goes on and Ongoing. on and on. Yeah. Uh, but still, you know, I was more than happy to give that a person who I'd never talked to before or knew anything about uh, some of my time. And it gives you great, a great opportunity to write an article because there's, if they're asking, then other people are asking too. I didn't write an article about it, but I just gave that person information and it didn't really bother me. But it certainly helps if the person would say, oh, such and such told me I could give you a call. You know, it's, it's, it's easier to kind of grease the wheels a little bit with, uh, with an approach like that. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. More of the 10 ways to lose friends and irritate people coming up here in moments. You can chime in and bring whatever's on your mind. It's Free Talk Live. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of... Where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was 
kind of stuck in the left right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I am is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. It's already too late. Criminals have kicked in your door and are now in your home. Before this happens, homeowners have a choice. One, do nothing and hope you aren't one of the 1.4 million families attacked each year. Or two, refuse to be a victim and for as low as $59, reinforce your doors with door devils. Door devils simply attach to existing door frames and have proven to stop the biggest bad guys from kicking in doors. Read our police testimonials of real-life events at doordevil.com. Alarms don't stop kick-ins. We do. Doordevil.com. My name is Jessica Armand. I'm an activist, a GCN listener, and mother of three. Our drinking water and food are filled with fluoride and other contaminants that harm our teeth and gums. To protect my family, I created My Magic Mud, an all-natural teeth whitening and strengthening remedy. My Magic Mud is a soft powder that polishes your teeth, reduces sensitivity, and removes harmful toxins from deep inside your mouth. You deserve a bright, healthy smile. Visit MyMagicMud.com and get yours today. That's MyMagicMud.com. Free Talk Live. You give someone an ounce of liberty and they'll go around abusing it and harming everyone else with it. If we legalize guns... People will um, be shooting people everywhere. Right. If you legalize prostitution, people will be having sex on the street corners. <laughs> if you legalize drugs, we'll have heroin vending machines in the streets. We've heard it all on Free Talk Live. <laughs> they take it to the most absurd, illogical extremes. And you're absolutely right, Alexander. It's okay for them to have freedom. Yeah, you can give them a gun. They won't go around shooting people. But watch out with their neighbor because you give them a gun. They'll go around in a ramp page around the city killing everyone. Oh, oh, but yes, they can be trusted, and apparently the government can be trusted, too, because magically, magically, we only elect the best of the best, the cream of the crop. The bureaucrats that are administering (laughs) these programs are the upper echelon of society, the most trustworthy individuals. Sometimes when I squint, I swear I can see a halo above their (laughs) nose. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. Enough time for your call and thoughts. If you dial now, toll free to 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 Three seven three three. We're continuing with the ten ways to lose friends and irritate people. Also, want to invite you to help Free Talk Live out by shopping with us. You can go to shop.freetalklive.com. Enter Amazon through the links you'll find there. There's Amazon Canada, Amazon UK, and Amazon US. You click into the right Amazon for you, and Free Talk Live will get a portion of your purchase price. It's actually about seven to eight percent in most categories on Amazon. Electronics is only about four percent. But still, that's you know money that would otherwise be going to Amazon that we're going to get when you enter through our links at shop.freetalklive.com. So thank you for doing that. It makes a big difference for us. And it's the same great prices and same huge selection that you're used to uh, that, uh, that you're helping us with. And so we really appreciate it. Shop.freetalklive.com. Back to the list here from inc.com and Small Business Yahoo. 
Uh, you ignore people in genuine need. This is the 10 ways to lose friends and irritate people. At the same time, some people aren't in a position to help themselves. They need a hand, a few dollars, some decent food, a warm coat. Though I don't necessarily believe in karma, I do believe good things always come back to you in the form of feeling good about yourself. And that's the reason enough to help people who find themselves on the downside of advantage. I mean, who can who can argue with uh, helping people out? That's always I feel compelled thing. to do that that kind of thing. Like I feel I I feel as if people who see someone in a dire situation who don't help, it's just like not must not be in them because I think that that's just it's just a natural reaction. At least for me, when I see someone in need, like I want to help them you to make it better. You wouldn't want to be in their position, right? You wouldn't want to be in their shoes. And if you were in their shoes, you'd want someone to, you know, give you a hand up. Right. It doesn't require any, like, I don't have to be religious or think that I'm going to get kudos from someone to do it. I just feel compelled to do, to do it. That's one of the reasons um, I, I did this, uh, the St. Jude thing that we're doing here on, on the oh, show. Yes. Um, where Let's mention that again. Yeah, where um, what I'm doing is I'm giving $10 to St. Jude's uh, Children, St. So Jude Children's Research Hospital mm-hmm. for every person that signs up uh, for the Free State Project until the end of uh, April. And some other people have sort of signed up with me. I think it's going to something like forty dollars. I threw in ten bucks. There's another gentleman who's a, a listener of the program, Michael, who threw in ten bucks. So we got thirty bucks going to St. Jude for every signer to the Free State Project, and another ten dollars was donated to the Heifer organization. Heifer, yeah, the in, Heifer International, I think is what it's called. And what number was it that we started at, by the way, Mark? With the fifteen um, five eighty eight. Fifteen five eighty eight is now fifteen thousand six hundred and fourteen. So uh, they've had they they've said that signups have been brisk, but not um you know but not stellar. Uh, it's not like Ron Paul uh you know went on uh, John Stossel and endorsed the Free State Project or anything. If he like happened that. to do that within the next week, we would be on the hook to pay for every one of those signups. Right, but the reason that I signed up, and and I'm sure that I could get you know yeah, I mean I'm going to try my very best to take me some time to pay to pay that off to uh, St. Jude, but I would. And the reason I did that was because I felt a lot of gratitude about how my son's been healthy and mm. and and smart and you know just all the things that I think are great about him and every parent thinks is great about their kid and these other kids they've got cancer and their families have so much trouble and I just I'm like well I'd like to help those people because St. Jude makes it so that you don't have to pay. The, the parent doesn't have to pay mm. for this hospitalization. Nobody does. It's a children's research hospital. It's completely charitably funded and there's research that comes out of there that helps everybody. So, you know. So you can get 30 bucks sent into St. Jude, yep. 10 bucks to Heifer uh, for simply going and signing up for the Free State Project, getting... which you've been thinking about doing anyway. So why not do it tonight at freestateproject.org? And if you're a signer already, now's, now's the opportunity to get family and friends. There have mm. been multiple people that have just talked to, you know, the significant other. Now's the time with the significant other um, or, the, you know, the parents or, or whatever, you know. Have a conversation with them about it and see how that uh, is going to work out. Let's go to the phones. Amos in West Virginia listening to WVTS. Hey, Amos. Yeah, I just was going to talk about this nodding business. Yes, uh, <laughs> I just have noticed, uh, even on television, on, especially some of the news shows, when they'll introduce somebody, like a talking head on there, a lot of times they will, especially with the man, they'll nod down. Sometimes a woman will do it. I've noticed that, they'll too. Nod- They'll nod down, and I, I've done it for years, just to, even uh, to people in other cars sometimes, and I've done it sometimes to women. Yep. Uh, and then uh, when I was Do in you college, get it back from the woman? Do the women? No, no, never. Yeah. But sometimes, somebody will say hi, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and See, then, I do it uh, back because I don't know. I, like, huh. just mirror whatever is around me in order to be more liked. Interesting. All right, Amos. Yeah. I just... Uh, um, in some places, you know, you do. It kind of depends where you are. You have to sometimes avoid contact. If you're trying to avoid uh, panhandlers and people like that, you can't get too too friendly. But I try to nod to everybody. And uh, even when I was in college, we would just I know we we, we start a habit just saying howdy to people, you know, and you kind of nod yourself. It's kind of a Western country type expression. And we would do yeah, that. So I find much. howdy to be pretty disarming. Um, you know, people yeah. people aren't, you know, they're not put off by it. It's, mm. uh, you know, people who say howdy aren't dangerous. You know what I mean? Right. It's just. Right. 
it's kind of more of a western thing. Now, now, like here in Charleston, there's one section of town that the people, the real snooty section of town, they absolutely will not. They try to avoid eye contact with anybody that's mm. not their own. But elsewhere in West Virginia, people are you know, very uh, friendly. And uh, I just wanted to say there's there was one college down south, and it may have been Texas A&M or someplace else. They actually, I don't know, they didn't require it, but they really impressed upon the students. They they expected all the students to say hello to each other when they passed. When they passed on Amos, the, thank you for your observations the, tonight. I appreciate hearing from okay. you. Uh-huh. Number five. On That's the probably t- a good way to prevent bullying, by the way. Ten yeah. ways to uh, irritate people and lose friends. Number five, you ask a question so that you can talk. A guy at lunch asks, hey, do you think social media marketing is effective? Well, you answer, I think under the right circumstances. Wrong, he interrupts. I've never seen an I've never seen an ROI. I've never seen a bump in direct sales. Plus, awareness is not even measurable or even an important goal. And he drones on while you desperately try to escape. It was a trap. Yeah. Don't shoehorn. It's a trap. In your opinions under false pretenses, only ask a question if you genuinely want to know the answer. And when you do speak again, ask a follow-up question. That helps you better understand the other person's point of view. I like to ask a question, ask questions to sort of interview people. I don't get out that much, quite frankly. Mm-hmm. And uh, there, you know, there are questions I have. There's, you have valuable information in your brain that I'd like to know the answers to. Sometimes I'll be accused of uh, interrogating somebody though yeah. when I do this. <laughs> I, I get it, and I mean, you know, that's whatever. The the best thing you can do at that point is, uh, you know, while they're answering is look them in the eye and smile. It doesn't seem, uh, you know, that's it, – it, it makes it so that you don't seem quite so, I don't know, detached. It's certainly a fact, as he points out here, that people like people who are genuinely interested in them and not in themselves. Is it, It's an old sales adage, isn't it, Mark, that uh, he who does the most talking is losing? I mean, not that there's a winner or a loser necessarily, but the idea of a sales salesman is you want to get the sale. And if you're talking too much, you're going to lose the sale. If the client is doing more of the talking, you're more likely to get the sale. Well, I think that that comes at a certain point in the uh, the, the sales uh, process. If, um, you know, the, the idea is, is when you give the presentation to the client or you tell them what the pricing is going to be, that's when you shut up. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly you want uh, the client to feel like they've been involved in the conversation, but sales is education. Um, in its, you know, sales in its best form is education. Anything else is just a bunch of hooey. But um, so, I mean, to educate, you do have to uh, you have to talk. Number six, you pull a do you know who I am? OK, <laughs> so maybe they don't take it to the Reese Witherspoon level, but many people whip out some form of the I'm too important for this card. Maybe I'm the not line sure is what Reese Witherspoon has I don't to do know, with he this, links but... to it, some sort of movie. Okay. Anyway, uh, maybe the line is too long, or the service isn't sufficiently personal, or they aren't shown their deserved level of respect. Say you really are somebody. People always like you better when you don't act like you know you're somebody. Indeed, or... you know there's still stories told about Frank Sinatra leaving generous tips for servers. Mm. Um, now, I mean, you know, generous tip means whatever generous tip means to you, but this is a person who. You know, is ki- if you're kind to people, be kind to people no matter who you are. You know, big people are kind to others. Little people are mean. I don't know who said this, but um, I, for- I wish I could recall so I could give the person appropriate credit. But the, the person said they take – whenever they meet somebody new, some business – or potential business partner or whoever, they take them out to dinner to see how they'll treat the help mm. and see how they'll treat the server. And if the person is rude to the server, if the person doesn't tip well, then that's an indicator that this is not somebody that you want to get into, uh, you know, whatever a, a agreement or organization. Or This person doesn't know how to handle people. They don't know how to respect people. They look down their nose at people they consider to be uh, beneath them. I thought that was a really great indicator. Yeah, I think that that's, uh, I, I agree Smart. with that. And I like that too. Been, it has worked in my life. Maybe yeah. only because I've been a server, so I think it's just good to be nice to servers. It's good to be nice to anybody. It doesn't get you to heaven, out. and some servers are bad. <laughs> Maybe it does. Wh- whether it's servers or checking know. out at the grocery store, it's good to be nice to folks all over the place. We'll see you tomorrow night at freetalklive.com. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business too, you know.
Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage wanna... and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration lot... of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, and, of course... OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. Did you know coffee is the second most absorbent crop on earth? Most coffee at grocery stores and chains contains banned pesticides and has a high mold content. Seriously, we're proud to partner with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to provide the best of the best coffee, BuzzBox Coffee. Try a free pound today. You cover shipping. 10% of future purchases benefit our efforts to give the gift of human freedom throughout the world. At least 100 World Vision microfinance loans. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Rick Young. Today is Monday, April 21st, 2014. Radio VR News. The Boston Marathon takes off this morning as the nation joins the thousands of runners as they race and also honor last year's victims in the tragic bombing. Meantime, the annual blessing of the athletes took place at a landmark church near the Boston Marathon finish line. Correspondent Warren Levinson reports. Everything about this year's Boston Marathon carries extra emotional weight. That includes an Easter service on Marathon Eve at the historic Old South Church, less than a block away from the finish line. Steve Spang is among the runners who took part. It was amazing. The music was great. The uh, messages were, was, were great. And uh, it, it was amazing to see that many marathon runners in, uh, in church. Since 2005, the church has been giving runners hand-knitted scarves. This year, a call for volunteers brought knitted contributions from as far away as Australia. Warren Levinson, Boston. A man is under arrest charged with a hate crime in New York City in an attack on a Sikh professor. Ed Donahue has the details. Christian Morales is accused of pulling the beard of Professor Prabjot Singh. It broke his jaw. He was kicked and punched as well. Singh says he heard, get him, Osama, and terrorist, and then felt someone grab his beard. Sick practitioners have been targeted by attackers who in some cases confuse it with Islam because sick males are required to wear turbans and beards. Singh co-authored a 2012 op-ed in the New York Times accusing the federal government of failing to accurately measure the extent of anti-sick violence. I'm Ed Donahue. A basement fire that left two young half-siblings dead on Easter morning in New York was accidentally set by the four-year-olds playing. Correspondent Julie Walker has